with the end in view of implementing urgent measures that will control and manage the cost of these basic commodities that pose a threat to the right to food of Filipinos and affect the fragile condition of many Filipino households. Senate Resolution 618 by Senator Pangilina, resolution directing the appropriate Senate committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation on the rising food prices with the end in view of determining the necessary interventions to stabilize the prices and ensure that every Filipino consumer has access to adequate and affordable food. And lastly, Senate Resolution 619, resolution directing the appropriate Senate committee to conduct an inquiry in aid of legislation into the causes of soaring prices of food and thus urge the Department of Agriculture to explain the status in the implementation of the stimulus program provided under RA number 11494, otherwise known as the Bayanihan to Recover as One Act, and the failure of the Department of Trade and Industry to efficiently implement RA number 75A1, otherwise known as the Price Act. Uh, authored by Senator Marcos. So, uh, uh, this, in this hearing, we shall look into the issue of the rising cost of basic commodities, food especially, that pose a threat to the right to food of Filipinos. The reported lack of enough supply of basic food items that is affordable, adequate, accessible, and safe. We shall also look into the implementation of Bayanihan II, uh, the Bayanihan to Recover Act by the Department of Agriculture and RA 75A1 or 81 or the Price Act by the Department of Trade and Industry. The Committee on Agriculture and Food shall be joined by the Committee on Trade and Industry and the Sustainable Committee at the same time. I wish to welcome uh, Senator Kiko Pangilinan, Senator Amy Marcos, Senator Risa Hontiveros, Senator Nancy Binay. Okay. Natawag ko na ba lahat? Okay. And from the government uh, executive department, we have Secretary Dar. Engineer Yusek Kayanan, uh, Yusek Visera, uh, uh, Yusek uh, Medrano, Yusek uh, Sheryl Marie Natividad Caballero, uh, Yusek Ernesto Gonzalez, uh, Asek uh, Christine Evangelista, uh, Asek uh, Federico Lasiste, Engineer Arnel De Mesa, Dr. Uh, George Colaste, uh, Director, Bureau of Plant Industry, Director Realden Morales, uh, OIC, Bureau of Plant, Director, Bureau of Plant uh, Industry, Director Eduardo B. Gangona, uh, Director, Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, Dr. Jocelyn Salvador, OIC Director of the National Meat Inspection Service, Dr. Lisa Basad, Assistant Secretary, uh, Representative to the Philippine Council for Agriculture and Fisheries, Dr. Ram Ramon Yedra, Director, Agribusiness and Marketing Assistance Service, Dr. Samuel Castro, BAE AS ASF Task Force, Secretary Ramon Lopez, uh, Secretary Carlos Dominguez, Secretary Menardo Guevara, uh, represented by uh, uh, Ramon Lopez, will be represented by ASEC and Claire Cabuchan, and uh, Yusek Rudby Castello. Uh, Secretary Dominguez, no representative yet. Secretary Menardo Guevara, 
represented by State Council Rosalie Kumla, uh, Secretary Chua, represented by Director Nirvan Natural, Agriculture and Nat Natural Resources and uh, Environment Staff NEDA, uh, Mr. Leonard Martin Guevara of NEDA, and Mr. John Kenneth Casabal. Uh, Yusek Claire Dennis S. Mapa of the National Statistics and Civil Registrar Office of the Philippine Statistics Authority, represented by Assistant National Statistician Divina Gracia del Prado, Ms. Reinaldo Adriano, Ms. Tepora, uh, and Ms. Marisol Faliarme. Okay, what the Chair, na ka mute kayo. I'm sorry, Attorney Karen Anyambao and Ms. Marilu Mendoza of Tariff Commission, represented by Commissioner Marisa Maricosa Paderon, Attorney Giovanni Concepcion, and uh, uh, Ms. Diana Hope Castro. Secretary Tugadi, represented by Ms. Jessica Marie Torres, and Ben uh, and Secretary uh, MMDA Chairman Abalos represented by uh, 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 say, uh, Mr. Frisco San Juan Jr. Under Secretary Yusek, Engineer Abraham Sales of the Toll Regulatory Board, represented by Mr. Jos Carlo Ordiliano, Attorney Noel Felonco, Secretary of the National Anti-Poverty Commission, represented by uh, Yusek Penelope Belmonte and Mr. Ron Mateo, Attorney Florina Agtarap, OIC Office for Competition, represented by Ms. Leia Christian, Leia Monoto, and Dr. Celia Reyes uh, of PIDS, represented by Dr. Rolano Briones, Senior Research Fellow, Mr. Arsenio Balisacan of the Philippine Competition Commission, represented by Attorney Cristina Condes de Sagon and uh, Attorney Orlando Polinar, and Mr. Nicanor Birones, President, Agriculture Sector Alliance of the Philippines and the Pork Producers Federation of the Philippines. Uh, Mr. Ferdinand Medina, Chief Executive Officer of the Ecopig Development. Chair, na commute kayo ulit. Eliseo Liu, Chairman, Pork Producers Federation of the Philippines, Mr. Chester Warrenton, President, National Federation of Hog Farmers, Inc., with Mr. Alfredo Nam, Mr. Jesus Cham, President, uh, Meat uh, Importers and Traders Association, Mr. Jeffrey Ileto, President, United Swine Producers Association with Mr. Ricardo De Jesus. Attorney Elias Jose Inchong, President of the United Broiler Racers Association with Mr. Gregorio San Diego. And the Consumers Organization, but wala siya. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, uh, Ms. Uh, yung Sina. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Rosendo so, okay, and then uh, Secretary Lopez of BTI has arrived, and uh, Commissioner Ma Marisa Marcosa Paderon of Tariff Commission, Mr. Len Lin de la Cuesta, Acting Chief Tariff, 
and uh, others. Mr. Uh, Ordonez, Chairman Alianza ng Agricultura, and uh, Dr. Lisa Batat for the Philippine Council for Agriculture and Fisheries. And uh, okay, not the tower goes. And uh, Jenny, Miss Jenny, Jenny, Jenny Tupas, head Ayala Moors, Mr. Uh, regrets palato. Okay. Uh, in, uh, okay. Engineer Rosendo so of the Sinag with Mr. Jason Kainglet. Okay. Uh, Mr. Herminio Agsaluna, National President ng Bansang Kilusan ng Mga Samahang Magsasaka. Mr. Rene Serilie, Convener, Kilusang Magbubukit ng Pilipinas, represented by Mr. Rafael Mariano. And Mr. Oh, of course, I, Mr. Ordonez, I have uh, no, read the name. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's go on with the hearing. Uh, Madam Chair, I'd just like yes. to um, make my presence known. Ah, okay, we recognize yeah. Sen Senator Pia Cayetano of the Sustainability Committee. So, uh, he will be with she will be with us in this uh, uh, hearing. Okay, as a background, 2020 has not been a good year for the agricultural sector as well as the other sectors. Looking back in early September 2019, three backyard farms in Risa reported high mortality losses. One of the affected farmers transported some deceased pigs to the neighboring province of Bulacan. The cause of the Rizal outbreak was suggested to be the feeding of canning baboy or swill, described as contaminated waste food or swill from Manila. It was later diagnosed to be African swine fever or ASF. This month, Agriculture Undersecretary William Medrano said that about 29.7 or 30 percent of the country's 14 million hog population has been wiped out by ASF and ASF-related actions such as culling. This means that the country has lost at least 4 million 158,000 pigs since the ASF struck the country in mid-2019. Sinag or the Samahang Industria ng Agricultura estimated that some 134 billion has been lost in the hog industry as it struggles with ASF. The damage and losses due to the Taal volcano eruption on January 12, 2020 have reached 3, 3, 3 billion, affecting 15,790 hectares and 1,923 animal heads, according to the bulletin released by the Department of Agriculture. Then a series of typhoon hit the country, Quinta, Raleigh, and Ulysses, which crossed Luzon in 2020 and left about 12.3 billion of damage in agriculture, primarily in the rice sector, according to the DA report. The COVID-19 pandemic in the Philippines, which is part of the worldwide pandemic, was first identified in the country on January 30, 2020. Several measures were imposed to mitigate the spread of the disease in the country, including bans on travel. On March 9, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte issued Proclamation Number 922 declaring the country under a state of calamity of public health emergency and enjoined the partial lockdown on Metro Manila to prevent a nationwide spread and later the lockdowns were expanded to the rest of Luzon. The COVID-19 pandemic brought about supply chain disruptions and low demand of agricultural products. The lockdown affected the flow of goods from farms to urban markets. There were labor mobility issues too. 
the reduction in local demand and export demand affected people's buying power as well. The Philippine Department of Agriculture, through the Bureau of Animal Industry, announced that the World Organization for Animal Health declared that as of January 8, 2021, the Philippines is now free of the last remaining strain of avian influenza or bird flu. The country was able to reserve the outbreaks of bird flu that hit a commercial farm and backyard poultry farms in Rizal province in less than a year after the poultry virus emerged in the country. And understandably, this may, this may be the only one of the few good news in our agricultural sector. In October 2020, the Philippine inflation rate went up by 2.5% as food prices rose. Rice may be cheap now, but Filipinos are finding it hard to find food items to pair it with rice, as costs rise during the pandemic, according to a study. The rise of meat prices was attributed to supply constraints brought about by ASF. DA admitted that pork supply is tight, but at the same time assured Filipinos that there is enough meat in the country. Chicken breast registered 11.11 increase from one in price from 180 kilos to 200 per kilo. Bangus registered 10% increase at 220 per kilo, while tilapia 6.6% increase versus 220 and alumahan, alumanan cost 400 per kilo. In its bid to stabilize the price, prices of basic commodities, the national government on January 15, 2021, signed an EO modifying the rate of import duties on certain agricultural products under Section 1611 of RA 10863 or the Customs Modernization and Tariff Act of 2016, maintaining the tariff rate of imported mechanically deboned meat of chicken and turkey at 5% until the end of 22, 2022 to ensure continued supply prices for canned and processed meat products. DA likewise proposes to freeze prices as the cost of pork source to 400 per kilo through an executive order that they want President Rodrigo Duterte to sign. This, the DA is saying that costs are due to market manipulation. DA is also proposing to triple pork imports under the minimum access volume to alleviate the shortage of pork from 50, 000, 54,000 metric tons to more than 160,000 metric tons in order to encourage producers and importers to import more of the co commodity. Pork imports under the MAB are levied 30% tariff, while the outcota tariff is 40%. Meanwhile, the Philippine Association of Meat Processor is asking the president to authorize limited importation of up to 50,000 metric tons of pork at zero tariff. Land Bank to provide financing and trade credit to qualified hog raisers and producers at concessional rates, and that the Man National Meat Inspection Service to temporarily suspend the implementation of the policy prohibiting the sale and display of frozen meat products in the public market, which are not equipped with refrigeration facilities during the duration of the shortage published in the papers last January 26, 2021. The Samahang Industria ng Agricultura or SINAG is proposing that instead of increasing imports, the DA should just subsidize the shipment of pork from Mindanao and Visayas to Luzon instead of just helping in the processing of transport permits. The National Federation of Hog Farmers or ProPork and ProPork uh, stand is no importing of pork with zero tariff. The government needs the tariff to raise funds to assist local farmers to repopulate and improve biosecurity measure 
in the absence of an ASF vaccine. They oppose the increasing of uh, minimum access volume as well. They are against the temporary suspension of selling frozen meat in the public market without freezer. Okay. Carrying meat importation with proven track record should only be the one to be accredited to import. They said that processor boy only 5% of their needs from the local producers, so their support is just a dream. DA should help backward, backyard farm with correct biosecurity so they can repopulate and ask LGU to support DA's Bantay Barangay program, which I think uh, the majority of the senators agree. <laughs> The increasing food prices have a major impact on the living standards of low-income households, which generally spend most of their income on food. We cannot overemphasize the importance of food such as rice, vegetable, livestock, poultry, and dairy in the food value chain to ensure adequate and affordable staple food supply, especially to Metro Manila and other urban centers despite the issues brought about by the pandemic and the series of natural disasters that hit the country. As we take care of our health and welfare, farmers and fisher folks, we also have a responsibility. A responsibility. We have also the responsibility of feeding the rest of the population by bringing the produce to the market. As the BSP reported, inflation in the country accelerated to 3.5% in December, up from November's 3.3%, marking the highest inflation rate since February 2019, but still remaining within the government's target range of 2 to 4%. By area, December inflation was softer in Metro Manila at 3.2 against a 3.7 pace in the region. In contrast, the price of rice went up 2.1% in the capital region, but was 0.2% lower in the provinces. The Department of Agriculture has already stepped in and added measures like a price ceiling on select goods and, and encouraged shipping pork from Visayas and Mindanao to areas experiencing high inflation and lack of supply. They, they have created this what you call hog lanes para matransport ang mga pork from Visayas and Mindanao to Greater Metro Manila. It is important to note that in computing for the Consumer Price Index in the Philippine Statistics Authority puts the Philippine Statistics Authority puts more weight on rice than other food products. In this case, rice brought down the overall figure of the food index and inflation rate, despite rising costs of other food items that are, typical, that are typically paired with rice. So with that, I, I end my short my explanation. And now we want to hear from the sponsor of the resolution. Of course, uh, first in the line is Senator Kiko Pangilinan, and then next is Senator Amy Marcos. After that, maybe the if uh, Senator Promentel of the Trade Committee will be here, he can speak, and of course, be, uh, Senator Cayetano of Sustainable Development. And after that, the other senators will speak. So we recognize Senator Kiko Pangilinan. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Uh, thank you, uh, distinguished colleagues in the Senate. At, uh, sa ating mga resource persons, magandang umaga po sa kanilang lahat. Uh, uh, mag interesting po ang timing ng ating hearing dahil ngayon ay Pebrero. At ito ay uh, uh, pag-ibig at pagmamahal. Yun nga lang, ang pinag-uusapan natin ay uh, yung kamahalan ng presyo ng mga bilihin. Sa pag-aalala natin sa ating mga kahal sa buhay, uh, isama na rin natin ang pagbibigay atensyon sa presyo ng karne, gulay at iba pang pagkain na lagi na rin nating tinatawag na mahal o kaya sobrang mahal. Siguro napansin na rin natin na sa araw-araw na ulam na inahain sa hapagkainan, mabibilang na ang piras piraso ng karne sa pagbit at nagkukulang na ang gulay sa chapsoy. 
Ang impact ng spiraling prices of meat and other food cuts across all sectors and strikes us in the very core. Hindi ho, sabi nga nila, pagka tayo ay nasaktan, okay lang pag malayo sa bituka. Pero ito, Kiko, Kiko, no sound, mute. Kiko, mute. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. Uh, tulay, tunay na dapat bigyan pansin ang uh, matindi at hinaing ng ating mga kababayan. Ayon sa Bantay Presyo Monitoring ng Department of Agriculture, Noong uh, 27 January, ang isang kilong well-made rice ay 44 pesos, local na galunggong 240 pesos, lempo 440 pesos, at isang kilo ng patatas 150 pesos. Kaya nang magtanong kami sa social media nitong ilang mga araw, saan aabot ang 500 pesos nila? Sabi nung isang nagngangalang lakson, kasya pa. Pang tricycle balikan, isang kilong baboy, 20 pesos mantika at isang kilong bigas. Wala nang iba. Ayon naman kay G, sa Laguna, 500 pesos, katumbas ay isang kilo ng baboy, kangkong isang tali, kami, kamatis tatlong piraso, talong isang piraso, okra isang tali, labanos isang piraso. 100 pesos plus 400 kilo na pot. Sinigang napunang sa gulay para sa isang pamilya. Si Carino naman, sabi, 1 kilo of pork, 370. 1 kilo of well-made rice, 39. 1 fourth kilo ng kalamansi, 60 pesos. Dalawang carrots, 30 pesos. At ang sukli, piso. This isn't even complete for one healthy meal. And many people don't even earn 500 pesos every day. Comment naman ni Nosmay, dati tanghalian hanggang hapunan, kaya po ang kasya po ang 500. Ngayon, tanghalian na lang po, nakabuti ng 500. Subok na subok ang budgeting skills ng bawat pamilyang Pilipino. Matinding diskarte ang ginagawa ngayon sa karampot na limang daang piso na kita ng minimum wage earner sa Metro Manila. Malinaw ang pangangailangan para sa agarang solusyon. Sabi ng Philippine Statistics Authority, bumagsak ang ating GDP para 925%. Pinakamalaking pagsak mula noong 1946. Itong uh, pagsak sa GDP, nakaka- Uh, kinakabahan tayo dahil ang ibig sabihin nito, decline in production, less production means less jobs, which is tantamount to fewer people having income para meron silang pambili ng pagkain. At doon po ang ibig sabihin nito para sa mga ordinaryong mamamayan, para sa mga mamimili, para sa ating mga sektor ng agrikultura at pagawa, our Senate resolution seeks to find an explanation for the rising food prices and to find necessary interventions. We also want to find out ano nga ba ang nasa likod ng pagtaas ng presyo ng bilihin? Ito ba ay natural causes or artificial in nature or both? Are there people behind price hikes and what can we do about it? Ano ba ang ating inventory ng meat and meat products? Tama ba na magkaroon ng price ceiling? Ito ba ay may sasagawa at may implement? Do we need to import in amounts as proposed? How much volume can the local economy absorb to stabilize prices. In June 2014, less than two weeks into my stint as Food Security Secretary, the nation faced a lack of rice supply that led to spiraling rice inflation. Dumadaing ang ating mga mamimili sa mataas na presyo ng bigas at pagkain noon. We immediately put in place three strategic interventions to address the situation, which in turn saw the stabilization of rice prices from 15% rice inflation to 0.8% rise inflation in less than one year, according to the PSA. These were the following interventions, namely, number one, we increased the supply of rice, NFA rice, in the market in a period of two months by 75%. In other words, halos dinoble ang supply ng bigas sa urban centers, ng NFA rice. Pangalawa, we created an interagency task force composed of the NFA, the DTI, the MPI, and the PNPCIDG. 
And based on the Price Act and the NFA uh, uh, PD number four, we went after profiteers, unscrupulous traders, and even a number of NFA managers that led to the revocation or suspension of permits of traders, the filing of cases against profiteers and hoarders, and even NFA personnel involved in diversion and rebugging. These cases were filed in regions three, four, five, six, Caraga, and NCR. Hindi natin pinalampas ang mga mapagsamantala. And number three, a transparent and competitive rice importation that saw the first ever failed NFA building of rice in 42, 42 years as we rejected high-priced bids of rice imports. This rejection and the lower purchase of rice led to lower price imports and led to the stabilization of rice prices and saved the government a total of 6 billion pesos of rice importation in 2014 and 2016. The Price Act or Republic Act 7851 empowers the government to augment supply in the markets to ensure ample supply and address demand, punish unscrupulous traders and profiteers, and going after and ensuring precisely uh, proper importation of rice, of uh, uh, goods, in this case, meat. We have in our hands the duty and opportunity to do something and help remedy the situation. Hindi tayo inutile. Tayo naman ang dumiskarte para sa mga solusyon na hinahanap ng ating mga kababayan. In closing, ika nga, sa ganitong sitwasyon kung saan tayo ay nasa laylayan, isang direksyon lang ang dapat tuhungin. Political will ang kinakailangan ipatubad. Gaya ng moto ng aking mga kapwa iskola ng bayan, there is nowhere to go but up para sa ating kita at kabuhayan, hindi sa presyo ng mga bilihin. Maraming salamat at magandang araw. Dr. Aini. Yes, thank you very much. Um, um, following the vigorous explanatory note uh, from uh, Senator Kiko, I need not repeat the point simply to highlight the uh, additional salient provisions in my own resolution. Firstly, the uh, inquiry, as uh, stated by uh, my no, good chairwoman, the inquiry into the uh, the inquiry into the uh, price. All right. So, but you, of course, yeah, you're hearing us also from the committee. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble. There's another. Uh, there's another hearing. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. There we go. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, as I was saying, I need not repeat the uh, the explanation vigorously uh, exposed by uh, my colleague Senator Kiko. But uh, may I add, as already stated by my good chairwoman Villar, that uh, there needs to be an inquiry into the biggest appropriation under Bayanihan 2, which was the 24 billion for the Department of Agriculture. This was meant to address the emergency in the uh, wake of the pandemic. And uh, while we are aware of the DBM's late release of DA's uh, share under that uh, law, we are also, from the outset, we were already questioning the inclusion of what appeared to be non-emergency measures, such as the agribusiness efforts with the uh, corridors, the setup of more research and development uh, aspects, and uh, certain um, inclusions that did not appear to be directly uh, responsive to the uh, prices anticipated to go higher as early as September. And now here we are, nagtaasan ng presyo, at parang wala naman na uh, impact yung 24 billion na ilinagay dyan. Ikalawa, yung uh, question natin, eh syempre, yung tungkol sa 5% tariff on mechanically deboned chicken until the end of 2022. Now that prices have skyrocketed, 
what is the rationale for EO123 at itutuloy pa ba ito? Tinatanong to ng ating mga poultry farmers. Ikatlo, syempre yung DTI, inasmuch as kayo ang uh, enforcer, ikang at implementor ng Price Act. Eh, ano ba ang nagagawa? We are imposing price ceilings that have become uh, uh, that have become uh, ridiculous and uh, uh, laughable in the light of the reality of the exceedingly high prices. Finally, nagkakaroon ng malisya itong uh, importation na tinitriple. Uh, Sa pagkatantanong ng lahat, kung 30% dati yung MAV, magiging 5%, yung outquota tariff na 40%, magiging 15%. Sino kaya ang masiswerte na nasa listahan ng importer na naman ng pork? Uh, masakit man, eh talagang dapat sagutin natin itong mga katanungan ng uh, taong bayan. And of course, I need not underline the fact that uh, food prices always hit the poor hardest, given that upwards of 60% of their expenses per family are sometimes dedicated, oftentimes uh, involved only in the buying of food. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat. We now recognize Secretary uh, Senator Pia if she would want to comment. Senator Pia. Wala. So, how about the other senators? Senator uh, Binay and Senator... Ah, there, Senator Pia. Do you want to comment? Senator Pia. Unmute. Unmute. Unmute ka. Ma, hindi ka nadidinig. There you go. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Just a very short manifestation. Um, to our... Directed to our... Uh, um, resource person no i i come from, from a perspective of sustainability madam can you hear me i don't know if my yeah 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 you're okay 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 we can hear you yes yes oh, okay yes. okay so um, i come from a thank you. i come from a, a the perspective of sustainability so i would just like our resource persons to ensure that they add it in their discussion, whether in the first part of this hearing, the second part, the third part, I don't really care. But I'm I'm looking towards the future, you know, for the information of the body. The, the committee I chair is Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking. So as our colleagues uh, and I deal and you deal with the problem now, my concern is the future. What are we doing now to also address the future? It is We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. Ay, na mute na. May I just request that you include that and um, um, what what you have done about that, what uh, coordinations you're doing with other agencies. Um, for the information of the body, we have put in funding uh, in uh, the University of um, University of the Philippines, Los Baños, and three other state universities precisely for uh, futures thinking, particularly in agriculture. And we have had discussions, lengthy discussions with NEDA on this as well, and the Department of Agriculture. So we'd like to, 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 to expect by now to be parts of the discussion, because only look at the present scenario, simply something like because there's so flu over the world, that's not seriously considered. We should have expected these are future scenarios that are not should not be shocking to us. So what what we try to do in our committee is to look at what systems you have in place to avoid these things surprising us because they are not unpredictable. They are very very predictable. So that is uh, the perspective where we come from. Um, Madam Chair, and uh, one more one more thing is, as we all know, I suppose, but I want it again part of the discussion, is that um, zero hunger is a very important uh, sustainable development goal. So we'd also like to know that what exactly are those efforts being done to attain that? Because again, a lot of things that are happening now 
are should not be surprising to us. We should be able, we should have had systems in place to address them. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pia. We now want to hear from the other senators, Senator Risa and Senator Binay, who will be first. No, thank you, Chair. I'll just uh, wait to ask okay. questions later. Okay. Salamat po. How about Senator Binay? Uh, Madam Chair, we can proceed. Madami dami hu yung mga bisita natin this morning. Okay, thank you. So we will start asking questions now. Uh, before that, I just want to acknowledge the other uh, visitors and resource persons. Ms. Elena Varona of the Price Statistics Division of PSA. Mr. Marco Maa, DTI Lola. Mr. Director Jesse Cardona of the Bureau of Customs. Attorney Victorio Maria Di Mag Mario Di Magiba, Laban Consumer Inc., uh, Felix Bitangol, Citizen Watch, and Mr. Jojo Garcia, General Manager, MMDA. And then uh, Mr. Ruben Reynoso, Undersecretary for Planning and Project Development, DOTR. Mr. Eves Dexter Sarcedo, Chief Customs Operation Officer, Yusek Penolope Belmonte, National Anti-Poverty Commission, Mr. Leonard Martin Guevara of NEDA, Sairi Soliaban of PICAF, Attorney Giovanni Concepcion of uh, Acting Chief Tariff Specialist of Tariff Commission, Mr. Jos Carlo Ordinalio, Head uh, Toll Regulatory Board, and Mr. Rodolfo Javeliane, United Philippine Consumers, and uh, Mr. Ron Mateo, Development Management Officer of NAPSI. So uh, who will be the one to ask the question? Uh, uh, Ma Madam Chairperson? Yes. Madam Chairperson, uh, kung meron lang PowerPoint presentation yung mga bisita natin, if we can get a copy. Yeah. You want them to show their PowerPoint? Uh, um, to share, to send. Uh, okay, we will ask uh, our resource persons to give us a copy and all the uh, others who would want to give a copy to the senators of their uh, PowerPoint presentation. Okay, we, uh, we start now asking questions. Who would be the first one? Uh, Kiko, Aimee? We are now asking questions. Uh, maybe I will yield to um, uh, Senator Marcos, and then I can raise questions after because I'm still waiting for some uh, some in, uh, material, ma'am. Okay, Senator yes. Imi. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Perhaps uh, uh, the first thing that we'd like to inquire is uh, uh, what has happened to the Price Act? There are sufficient grounds for the DTI to do automatic price controls of meat under RA 7581. Pero panay naman lagay ng uh, suggested retail price na medyo pinagtatawan na nga nung iba dahil uh, sa ilalim ng SRP na naka-paskel, eh binibenta naman ang doble o triple. Uh, ano po ang magagawa natin sa Price Act? Are there any sanctions that we can impose? Are there any actions we can undertake? May we ask the answer of uh, Secretary Lopez of DTI? Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Cynthia Villar, uh, Senator Amy Marcos, uh, the Chair of Economic Affairs Committee, the Honorable Members of the Committee and the Senate, uh, Secretary William Dar, fellow workers in government, and other attendees. Uh, salamat po sa pag ninyo sa amin sa committee hearing ngayon. Uh, Bibrief ko lang po kayo dun sa necessity in prime commodities coverage ng Price Act. Uh, pursuant to RA7581, as amended by 10, RA 10623, otherwise known as the Price Act. Uh, under Section 3, Paragraph 3, the DTI and other implementing agencies such as the DA, the Department of Health, the DANR, the Department of Energy, they are mandated to ensure adequate supply and reasonable prices of their respective basic necessity in prime commodities at all times. To protect the consumers, yung mga implementing agencies po should ensure stability of prices and supply of the respective uh, BNPC, basic necessity prime commodities, and uh, prescribe measures against undue price increases. 
during emergency situations and uh, like occasions. So each agency po is mandated to conduct the monitoring of prices, to identify the cost of market price irregularities, as well as determine price trends, accept po ng SRPs, and develop a database system on uh, prices. Uh, meron po kami mga yung proposed solutions, uh, if I may po. Ano? The core problem po kasi talaga dito, una-una, this is agriculture products uh, under po sa Department of Agriculture. And we all know it has been presented po that the issue is really supply availability. And uh, because of supply limitations, particularly dito sa issue pinag-uusapan on core, uh, ang DA naman po has presented their programs to address the situation. And of course, I will defer to the DA secretary to explain this. But we heard his presentation uh, and actions to really address the supply situation, which is to repopulate hog production in ASF cleared areas to transfer yung hog supply from surplus provinces to deficit areas like Metro Manila and those other parts of the zone to encourage diversification of diet to other protein sources uh, to import immediately the needed supply. Ang intindi po namin dito, yung importation po will be temporary just to fill in uh, yung gap in the demand and supply. And uh, part of facilitating imports would be to reduce the tariff rates and increase the minimum access volume uh, recommended by the DA. And uh, the DA also proposed the temporary mandated, temporary mandated price ceiling through an EO to be issued by the president. Uh, dito po sa pagset ng uh, SRP, tama po kayo na uh, kung medyo po ang magiging masyadong mababa o unrealistic, uh, baka po hindi mahirap po ma-implement at uh, wala hong sumunod. At uh, worse than that, baka po lalong mawala yung supply. Yun po yung ating pangamba kung sobrang baba, mababa ang presyo at wala na pong magpadala ng pork dito po sa Metro Manila o sa Luzon. Uh, sa DT, on DTI's part po, we are part of the Local Price Coordinating Council and again, uh, being an agriculture products, the DA led the uh, re revival of Local co Price Coordinating Council. Ito po yung together with other agencies and LGUs. So the DA included DTI, DILG, at mga LGUs, local government, para ho matutukan yung bawat stage ng uh, supply chain and uh, try to intervene where we can. Tulad ho yung concerns na uh, magta magtataas ba o tinitigilan ba ang supply on the wholesaler part, on the traders, biyahero part, or or uh, artificially tinaakyat ang presyo from the whole biyahero, wholesalers, at pagdating sa retailers, mataas na. Kaya ho, whenever we call the attention ng retailers at dito po sa mga price monitoring, we, we accompany DA. The, again, we cannot move on our own without the DA kasi po uh, as provided in the price act. This is under DA. So, kami po yung nagbibigay support uh, when it comes to monitoring. Pero pag issue ng notice of violation, again, it will be the DA who will be who, who should be doing that. Uh, we can do that for manufactured products, yung, yung uh, mga grocery products and supermarkets. Kaya ho po, dito sa manufactured products, which is the uh, one being uh, monitored and uh, sort of uh, managed, controlled by DTI, Doon po kami numa-action doon sa mga manufactured products. DA po would be issuing the necessary notice of violation at uh, ito po yung uh, uh, mga roles po namin lahat. But the LPCC magsasama-sama po, ang malaking importansya po dito would be ang tulong ng mga local government units. Yes, Mr. Secretary. Sorry. Madam Chair, with the indulgence of yeah. Senator Aimee. Yes, Mr. Secretary, may hear it lang ako, one second. Yes. Sabi po ninyo, yung violations uh, against the Price Act, kapag food DA, kayo kapag manufactured lang, tama ba yung pagkaintindi ko? Kasi okay. nahihirapan po kami sa pasahan ng uh, responsibilidad eh. Uh, opo, uh, yung pag-agriculture po, agriculture products under DA, yun po yung nakasaad sa price. Manufacture, how about canned goods? Canned can goods, na food. Pag process Process. Sa inyo, sa inyo. Yes. Oh. I mean, manufactured, delata, like instant oh. hotel, batas. Oo, oh, oh, oh. inyo yun. So yung uh, pinoprocess ng processor na binibigyan sila ng 
in-extend yung uh, 5% uh, tariff on the bond uh, meat. Oh, yeah. Kayo mag, uh, ano nun, yung ba tumataas ang presyo, eh, binigyan na sila ng uh, privilege doon. Uh, no, Madam Chair. In fact, yun po yung nilinaw natin. Kaya po kami nag-request talaga noon on the DTI part kasi po it will affect itong mga manufactured products. Yan nga, binigyan sila, di ba? Opo, oh. nabigyan po yung ito. Oh, hindi, uh, buma Wala tumataas ba ang presyo o bumaba ang presyo? Uh, maintain po kasi hindi po umakyat ang presyo. Kahit abroad po tumataas ang presyo ng NDM, hindi pa rin po sila nagtaas yung mga manufactured products. Uh, dulot na rin po ng uh, yung exchange rate po natin mataas na yun, malakas na yun. Kaya ho, relatively nababalansi ho yung konting pagtaas ng, uh, ng MDM abroad. Uh, but, pero malaking bagay ho yung hindi tinaas yung uh, taripa nun dahil wala naman local producers. At para nga ho, hindi mapasa yung pagtaas ng cost sa manufactured products. So, uh, with the indulgence of Senator Ma Aimee, Madam okay. Chair, just a really quick question. I'll just ask one, one lang quick follow-up, uh, Senator Risa, tapos kayo na. Um, Sen uh, sa kay Secretary Lopez lang po, sa pagkaalam ninyo, meron na bang nacho charge dyan sa ilalim ng Price Act, whether DTI or DA? Kasi wala namang kapinababalitaan na nakakasuhan dyan. Uh, mer meron po, uh, on the manufactured products po, we have... Uh, Statistics, si Yusek Castello would have the numbers. Uh, but meron po tayong mga na-issuehan ng mga violation at na-charge na po uh, na pagdating po dito sa Price Act under manufactured products. Ano ba yan? We can probably sila. ask for a record of those kay uh, DTI Castello na lagi kong naririnig sa radyo. Kung maari sana yung uh, violations at yung mga actions, baka namang kailangan patawa na mas mataas na sanction. Senator Risa, please, sorry. Thank you, Senator Ami, Madam Chair, if I may. One related yeah. question on the price uh, act uh, question of Sen. Ami. Um, Sec. Lopez, Kabado lang po kasi ako sa pagpataw ng price freeze sa baboy at manok na uh, yung mga tindera natin sa palengke ang mapaparusahan. Kahit na po yung pagtaas ng presyo ng karne at profiteering kung nangyayari po iyon, ay hindi naman sa mga maliliit na tindera sa palengke nangyayari. So bakit ang mga maliliit na magtitinda ang may ipit kung sa mga naunang transaksyon nangyayari ang pagtaas, halimbawa sa farm gate, assembler, processor, sa cold storage, o kahit pa nga sa transport, papuntang palengke nangyayari iyong pagtaas ng presyo na iyon. Uh, tama po, Senator Lisa, Madam Chair. Uh, importante yun po talaga sa uh, minungkahit, recommend po natin kay Secretary William Dar na pag nagset po tayo ng SRP sa retail, kailangan po may SRP rin sa wholesale, may SRP sa biyahero. Para po malinaw across the value chain, mamonitor ho at susunod lahat ng nasa value chain. Kasi ho, pagpasok na nung presyo, nung, pagpasok na nung uh, pork o nung produkto sa palengke, uh, ang problema po ay talagang ang retailer susunod na lang po dun sa kung ano yung pinasa sa kanila at magpapatong sila ng 5 or 10 pesos. Uh, so, so sila ho talagang may regular na patong po. Sa mga produkto. So, importante ho talaga ang SRP will be at the different level. So, from farm gate up to the retailer. Para ho talaga lahat po dapat sumunod. At kung may adjustment pong kailangang i-consider, ay dapat pong i-consider. Dahil, ang, nung minute po na rin, sumama po kami sa DA, nung minute po ang uh, mga, yung industry and the producers along the value chain, uh, yun naman po ang sinasabi nila na hindi naman po sa gusto nilang tumaas yung let's say yung presyo ng baboy pero sa kakulangan ng supply at imagine nila imagine po natin ang explanation nila na dati ay let's say uh, 100 kilos ang dinideliver ngayon 50 kilos na lang ay parang talagang tumataas po yung unit cost yung yung in effect yung delivery cost ng bawat kilo or eh, ganun po yung yun yung ganun po ang reality ganun po ang difference po talaga pag konti ang supply kaya ho in the end, ang solution po talaga yung supply. Yun po ang kailangan damihan po. And marami mong programa ang DA dyan. So, in so in 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 Lopez, and I guess secondarily, um, pag natukoy kung sa wholesale stage nangyayari yung price increase, hindi maparusahan yung nasa retail stage That's tulad right. ng ating mga malilit na tindera sa palengke. And later, uh, Madam Chair, said, I mean, follow up ko na lang kung 
uh, dumulog na po ba kayo uh, o oh, ang DA din sa Philippine Competition Commission para matanong kung saan parte ng value chain maaring makita ang labis-labis na pagpataas ng presyo ng baboy at manok kung ito nga ay nangyayari nga. Salamat muli, Sec Lopez. Salamat, Sen. Aimee, Madam Chair. Salamat, Thanks, Risa. Um, Sec Lopez, uh, last na lang. Itong SRP sa iba't ibang stage ng value chain, yung SRP retail, SRP wholesaler, uh, is that already being implemented now? Uh, uh, hindi pa po. Uh, yun po ay isang recommendation po namin sa DA. Uh, at siyempre po, uh, we leave it to Secretary Dar para ho makonsider. Ang alam po namin, uh, and of course, uh, the Secretary can, uh, can, can report or can mention, ang alam po namin may recommendation po sila sa, sa Office of the President about the SRP. At ang alam po namin sa retail price lang po yun. So maybe that can be considered if the SRP is issued, uh, the DA can also issue the necessary SRP along the value chain. Um, I, Secretary, I think the DA has uh, implied in certain press releases that there has been evidence of uh, uh, price fixing and uh, artificially raising prices, artificially uh, creating an undersupply in, uh, in food. Uh, meron ba kayong nakikita nito, whether DTI or DA, na pinagtutulong-tulungan daw ang uh, presyo ng ating traders, aggregators, at iba pa? Meron ba kayong ebidensya sa DTI? Kasi nabasa ko na nagsalita yung DA tungkol rin. Uh, I'll, I'll have to defer to the DA, uh, uh, Madam Senator. Uh, dahil For your part? Sa amin po, wala oh, po. Oh, wala, sa DTI. Wala. Opo. Uh, ang, ang okay, ginawa so we look forward to the different... Okay, thanks. Yes po. Uh, ang, 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 ang ginawa rin po namin, uh, tulad po nung uh, na, na, na relay po sa atin ni Senator Pangilinan, na we really had to involve also the intelligence group. Kaya po yung ENP, yung uh, NBI, uh, talaga po kailangan i-include din po dito sa effort na to, joint effort, uh, na talagang to do extra intelligence work pagdating po sa pag-monitor pati ho ng mga traders. Ito po kasi yung din natin nakikita sa labas sa merkado. At ito ho yung nagpapasa-pasa ng uh, mga presyo. Kaya ang ako, importante yung magkaroon sila ng SRP at uh, importante rin ho magbitita ang mga bodega nila or ma ma in effect, ma ano ho, ma ma investigate kung talaga ho may mga profiteers and orders along the way, especially at this time. So we will really need more intelligence uh, uh, work as well as enforcement. Uh, thank you, Madam Senator. Thank you, um, um, Secretary Lopez. Siguro yung DA, kasi parang nabanggit ninyo sa press release na may katibayan kayo na nakakakumplutan sa ating mga traders, aggregators, at iba pa tungkol sa presyo. I think may implication lalo to sa dati-dati, sobra-sobra yung manok. Biglang ngayon, eh, halos wala ng manok. Sa bagay, talaga naman walang magpapalaki o uh, magkocultivate ng poultry kapag ganun yung presyo. So, merong natural na diminishing. Pero, ang uh, implication, meron daw nagkukumplot sa ating mga traders. Tama po ba yun, DA, please? We call now ang Secretary Dar. Uh, uh, Honorable Cynthia Villar, Chair of the Committee on Agriculture, Distinguished Members of the Committee, sa lahat po nakasama sa gobyerno, sa lahat po ng stakeholders sa pribadong sektor, masaga ng umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, Madam Chair, the issue on food prices in these crucial times is no laughing matter. Nakakabahala na marami ang nawala ng trabaho ng kanilang kabuhayan at yun ay hindi alam kung saan kukuha ng isang in. Any increase in prices has a major impact on the living standards, especially of lower income households, which generally spend most of their income on food. Even a slight increase can confront the members of that household with difficult decisions. So uh, I have two slides to start with the food security uh, sources. Secretary, can you answer the first the question uh, Madam Chair, before uh, we, we do 
Uh, Mr. Secretary, can you answer first the question before we do this? Yes, uh, in short, the uh, answer... The question is, uh, meron ba kayong, uh, ano tawag dito, uh, uh, ka, ano, meron kayong... Evidence na, na merong, ano, merong uh, cartel or profiteering or that. Meron ba kayong katunayan dyan? Okay po, ito yung uh, monitoring po natin, uh, the latest for the last two weeks, ang uh, farm gate price po ay 132 to 185. Ang extreme condition or uh, setup is in the uh, Karaga 233. So, ang uh, may mga uh, kung ito po yung farm gate price, sustain po ito. Uh, ang pagdating na sa biyahero sila na po yung nagpapatong na malaki para uh, apektado na yung presyo sa retail price. Ganun po. We will show you yung data. Okay. Mayroon po kami. Yes, okay. Secretary, Dar, Secretary Dar, kasi sa mga manggugulay ng uh, Amyana ng Norte, pinagtatakahan namin, hindi naman talaga nagbago ang presyo sa farm gate. Ganun pa rin ang bilihan sa magsasaka. Bakit pagbagsak sa Metro Manila, pagkataas-taas, minsan doble o triple na? Kung nasabi na ninyo, Sen. Aimee, that's the reason na ito, we have analyzed this, everything. Talagang yung farm gate prices are within range na okay yung pagtaas. The cost of producing a kilo of uh, hag is 105 pesos. So itong uh, farm gate prices ay 132 to 185. Now, that's right. Pagdating na sa merkado, 400 pataas. So, sino po ang nagmamanipula, nagpaproprofiteering po dito? It's the biyahero, it's the wholesalers that's making this killing. At, uh, ang, ang question, Secretary Dar, uh, that puts uh, us to uh, question the uh, conclusion of Secretary Lopez that it's an undersupply question. Dahil, bakit yung farm gate mababa pa rin? Undersupply ba talaga o profiteering? Hindi po. Hindi. Mayroon tayong datos din kung ilan na yung nawala. So, yung farm gate price halos stable po from, uh, from even uh, before uh, Christmas. Meaning, tumaas kunti, which is uh, a good indication na nag adjust na yung hog industry at uh, this is one opportunity, opportunity naman na maganda yung presyo nila kasi nakakabawi na may, uh, in, amidst the pay ASF. So ang tinututukan namin talaga yung mga biyahero at ang, uh, ang mga wholesalers kasi sila na yung nagmamanipula ng sitwasyon. So recent ah. indications would really show us uh, lahat itong mga undersecretaries namin, karamihan sila, ay we, we had them go to the regions at ganun ang uh, findings po nila. Now, But Secretary, natin, Secretary po kasi, marami siyempre nagre-reklamo dahil yung transportation, nandito naman yung DOTR, e eh, talagang structural issues, yung strategy na price ceiling, walang mangyayari dyan kasi alam naman natin, walang sufficient support sa hog racers. Makita natin na almost all the hog racing uh, regions near Metro Manila, for example, have uh, shown significant increases sa transport. So tama naman yung issue ng transport. Siguro makakatulong yung DOTR. Pero ang tanong pa rin, kung nandyan lahat po ng USEC, ang katutak na ASEC, nakatutok ng DA, ano ang ginagawa nila dyan sa profiteering ng biyahero, ng trader at kung sino man? Anong action po? Anong parusa? May sanction ba yan? May ginagawa ba? Kasi alam na alam natin yung mga nangyayari from farm gate to marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. Ito po yung isang tinutukan po natin. Can I be allowed, Madam Chair and Sen. Aimee, to present to you now yung yeah. dalawang slides lang para lang okay. makita, muna, makita muna yung total approach namin para ma maintindihan po natin. Dalawa lang slides. Okay. Okay, okay uh, we recognize. Masal maraming salamat ulit, uh, Madam Chair. Ito po yung uh, 
uh, dapat uh, everyone has to appreciate because uh, ensuring food security is highest, uh, you know, uh, goal sa ating bansa. And uh, just to mention, uh, uh, in most cases, hindi pa tayo 100% self-sufficient sa mga iba't ibang commodities, maybe except for a few, but kokontiyan. So that we have outlined these three major food sources para mas maintindihan po natin. Number one is yung priority na binibigay po natin pagtaas ng production, uh, safe, nutritious, and affordable. So there's no, there's no uh, discussion on the first opportunity na tutulong tayo, tinutulungan natin ang local uh, commodity industries natin. So that's clear. Now, habang uh, pinupus natin yung number one, number two po, itong mobilization and improving local supply chain uh, from surplus provinces to other areas para uh, mapunuan natin yung shortage dito sa Manila, including uh, itong ginagawa natin ngayon ng price freeze. And I will go into the details of this. At uh, from May to December last year, nakapagparating po tayo ng 250,000 hugs uh, galing Visayas and Mindanao. Now, number three po, alam natin din na may ASF na ngayon walang bakuna po. And Spain, uh, I'm not uh, mentioning that it will take us 30 years to, to control. But Spain had it for 30 years. But uh, we can do it shorter. And we'll go to that if you want to ask. And number four is... Uh, importation to fill up demand yung gap can i interject uh, miss uh, secretary oh, ma ma but may news na meron na daw vaccine by end of the year ang vietnam ganito po mamang kalita kaya, kaya yes mayroon vaccine na ongoing ang trial sa vietnam ito ay binigay na us us uh, da so we have been in contact with USDA all this time and they are willing to do the same. And, uh, and ang, nakalagay doon, uh, press release nyo na you gave 80 million to the OST para dito sa ASF uh, vaccine? Hindi po, hindi po ganun. Ang, uh, yung 80 million ay nakaset aside kasi mayroon rin tayo dito sa Pilipinas rapid test kit na being developed by Central Luzon State University, funded by the Department of Agriculture and Bureau of Animal Industry. So halos patapos na po yung proseso yan sa pag-register or my testing pa na ginagawa. At pag natapos na yan, hopefully, ay magmas manufacture po na tayo dito. Rapid test kit. Meaning we are allocating now this early 80 million pesos what well, happen when that test kit is available? Now, mayroon rin mga ibang rapid PCR test na available naman at yun na munang gagamitin natin po. So, can I proceed to the second yeah, slide? Yeah, okay, now? okay. Okay po, ito na ngayon yung kabuuan ng aming uh, ginagawa measures to support the hog industry and to lower pork prices so it's a whole of nation approach at uh, uh, gusto kong again i repeat yung previous slide pero walang budget ang ano hindi ba ang palaging pinakamaliit ang budget niyang ano eh livestock eh tapos binasa ko yung bayanihan to nyo wala naman ding nakalagay doon na for livestock eh mayroon po ma'am mayroon po ma'am dagdag doon uh, explain nyo sa akin kasi binasa ko yung buong report ng Bayanihan 2. Walang nakalagay doon sa livestock. Tapos, 25% lang ang inyong ano eh, spending. Well, Oo, nga, ang, as, as of your latest report. Ha? Binasa ko yung report nyo eh. 25% lang. Tapos, wala akong nakitang livestock doon na repopulation. Wala, wala. Mayroon po ma'am, let Madam, me mention please. Madam Chair, uh, this is under Secretary Medrano. I uh, oh. would like to report that uh, under Bayanihan 2 stimulus package, mayroon po tayong nakalaan na uh, 678 uh, million 
for various uh, livelihood programs for livestock and poultry po. No, but yung livelihood niyo, gumawa ng bagnet, gumawa ng, uh, ng ano, chicharon, hindi oh, repopulation. Wala naman po. Hindi po yun eh. Hindi wala repopulation trans eh. Oh, wala, wala. So, liwanagin niyo to kasi binasa namin, report niyo yun eh. Wala eh. Oh. We will clarify this in due time, ma'am. Yeah, okay, yeah. Ma I May I move that you provide us uh, another report because the report you provided us, wala kaming nakita na repopulation. Oh, and then, ano yung gagawin nyo sa ASF? Very vague. Sasabihin, diseases, ano, transboundary diseases. Ano ba yun? Maraming transboundary diseases. I hope you make a report na mas detalyado kasi tapos ang na-spend nyo lang as of December 25 Present. Eh, hindi ba dapat tapos na ng December 19 yung bayani yan? Buti, in-extend yan. Pero dapat December 19, tapos na yan eh. Yes, Madam Chair, ang laging dinadahilan, very late yung, dis yung release, na delayed release ng DBM, tapos naabutan na ng Pasko. Pero bidat as it may, uh, talagang kulang na kulang at parang walang banggit nga sa repopulation. Higit sa lahat, yung pinakamahal na bahagi, yung transportation, cold storage at iba pa, talagang walang wala sa listahan ng bayanihan. Two. E last year pa tayo, sinasabi na natin na kukulangin ng pagkain. At yung bayanihan to, kaya nga binagyan ng pagkalaki-laking budget, kayo na yung pinakamalaki, eh para ma-address yan. E nakita natin, walang epekto, bilyon-bilyon na ang binigay. Kasi ang pinakamalaking budget do sa bayanihan to nakita ko yung magbigay ng pera sa mga farmer. That's okay. But uh, parang nagpunta na naman sa rice 5 billion. Eh hindi naman rice ang problema natin kasi may RCEP na tapos may na National Rice Resiliency Fund. Tapos yung unang rice, yung unang bayanihan one uh, 8.5 billion ang rice resiliency. Eh, alam nyo magkakaproblema dito because of ASF. Para wala akong nakita na repopulation of uh, livestock. Oo. Kaya siguro uh, iliwanagin natin to kasi talagang napagod na nga ako kababase. So, eh, wala ako makita. So maybe you should make a new report para i-clarify sa amin. Kasi misan vague na vague ang report nila. Oo. Sige po, uh, let me go ahead with the first priority, local production. Okay. Yung, yung report kasi bayanihan to ay uh, doon lang. Uh, mayroon pa tayong iba't ibang sources to do repopulation. Yeah, but sayang yung bayanihan to, 24 billion. And that that should have solved this, ano, this uh, problem sa ano, pork. Uh, Hindi masyado yung vegetable kasi yung vegetable, cash crop yan eh, one and a half month lang, makaka-recover tayo dyan pag nagtanim tayo. Pero yung pork, medyo matagal to eh, tsaka yung chicken. So sana uh, uh, binigyan ng emphasis to eh, di ba? We, we will continue to realign and uh, dagdagan natin itong pundo. Kasi alam mo, Secretary Dar, yan ang napansin ko. You know, ang ang contribution ng crop sa agriculture is 52%. Ang next is ano, ang next is uh, livestock and poultry which is about 33% and last yung fisheries 15%. Pero pagtingin mo sa budget, pinakamaliit yung livestock. Parang kawawa sila palaging maliit ang livestock. So maybe we should uh, do a law to help livestock. And maybe you can give some ano, ideas how we will, ano, the same thing na ginawa natin yung RCEP. Maybe we can do something for livestock also. Oh, ma'am. Okay, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ituloy ko lang muna para mas... Itong, uh, itong laban sa RCEP continues to be one of the biggest fights we are pushing. And uh, ito na nabanggit ko kanina, yung rapid te test kit. Yung, uh, uh, we need to have stricter quarantine checkpoints. At ang suma total po dito, yung coordination, act collective action na under the leadership of LGUs, nandyan naman sa batas na talaga LGUs sa kanilang uh, lugar, sila ang uh, unang front, uh, first responders and frontliners. Now, in financing 
financing itong local production po uh, for commercial hog raisers, the Land Bank of the Philippines has set aside a special uh, loan facility of 15 billion. So very uh, affordable yung interest rate for the commercial hog raisers. While that of the uh, uh, backyard uh, hog raisers, mayroon half uh, a billion pesos under the AC ACPC funding. Now, doon sa pangalawang uh, strategy po, supply chain, uh, we are mobilizing uh, supplies from surplus provinces to metro areas at uh, dito po nagpa-approve rin tayo sa ATF ng tinatawag na nautical highway for the hog lanes at uh, we are elevating our kadiwa ni Anit Kita and we are uh, in partnership with the Department of Transportation in this mobilization effort and other agencies, DTI, DILG, yung mga nagbababoy sa Visayas, Mindanao, kasama po sila dito. Now, uh, second doon sa price, relation to price ceiling po, ay uh, yung sinabi ni Secretary Mon Lupe, Maraming salamat, Sekmon. Ito ay yung setting up of the wholesale price for pork ay uh, gagawin po natin or for hugs uh, para ito yung isang uh, control po natin dun sa nagsasamantala ng na mga biyaheros or uh, wholesaler. Then the part of that... May, may uh, question lang ako dyan sa price ceiling, di ba? Can I intercede? Kasi ang stand ng DA, yung pork ibaba to 270 to 300 ang price ceiling. Pero yung mga manufa, yung ating mga nag nagaalaga ng baboy, gusto nila 330 to 360. Ano tingin ano ngayon ang opinion niyo dito? Parang nagkaroon kayo ng uh, differences o parang bababa sila sa 270 to 300. Sila 3.30 to 3.60. What do you think of this? Yeah, after the meeting with the National Price uh, Coordination Act, I, uh, we adjusted this uh, price ceiling recommendation to the palace. Yung pork kasim po ay 280 na, yung recommendation po namin. At hmm. yung uh, pork uh, liem po ay... Uh, 200, no, 310. So, uh, so nag-adjust na kayo? Um, oh. And, uh, moving forward, uh, Madam Chair, yung nasabi na rin ni Secretary Mon Lopez, yung economic intelligence, at ito rin in, in relation to what have been mentioned by Sec, uh, Senator Aimee, na tututukan po namin yung mga biyahero na nagsasamantala and the wholesaler. So, nandyan, uh, it's again a whole of government approach. Then, the, the third strategy, food diversity. May question po dito. Madam, ano, po. Oo, sabi kasi dito ng, ano, ng Alianza Agricultura, ang uh, farm gate daw ng, uh, ng uh, pork is 250, hindi 105 to 132. Tama ba yon? Ano ba to? Yan ang question nila, nag-ano sila, nag-online sila. What do you think of this? Masyado naman yata mataas ang 250. Ma'am, hindi ko nakuha yung tanong. Ah, uh, hindi ba sabi mo ang farm gate prices ng pork is 105 to 132 per kilo, di ba? Hindi ma'am, hindi ma'am. 105 is the production cost. Oh. Break, break even point 'yon. 105. Oh, so, uh, so magkano ang farm gate price? Farm gate price na nakuha natin itong last two weeks. Can we have the slides? Yung, uh, kasi mayroon po tayo. So, nasabi ko na na talagang between 130 to, sabihin natin, 200. Ito po. Uh, sabi kasi nila 250 daw. Ito. So, po yung, uh, so 200 ang maximum. Ikaw, Aimee, kayo sa probinsya, Aimee, what do you think? Ah, uh, hindi naman umaabot ng 250 po. Ah, uh, pero lumalampas na ng 200 po. Ang farm gate. Yes po. 
ang farm gate. Ang, ang uh, Ilocos Norte po, as per our report, nandyan na po yung uh, summary po ng uh, aking uh, pag-monitor at base po doon sa datos natin. Ito nga, within the range tayo. That's right. Sa price ceiling na uh, uh, yung pork uh, liyem po ay uh, 280 and the uh, pork kasim ay uh, oh, 310. Pork, 310. Pork kasim ay 280. Pork liyem po ay 310 po. So, so my, what do you think of that, Aimee? Reasonable ba yun, Aimee? Uh, ang pagkalam ko yung farm gate, tama po yung nandyan na umaabot ng 210, 220. Sa amin, di naman umabot ng 250, baka sa ibang probinsya. At uh, doon naman... Pero uh, tama ba yung price ceiling nilang bago na uh, ano, sa mo, 280 to 310, pwede na yun? Saksakan po ng mahal, talagang umaal malahat. Hindi, pero iyon ang kanilang ipa-price free set. Iyon ang recommendation nila, 280 to 310. Sana nga ma-achieve po. Sa kung, kung, kung under 300, at least kakayanin pa. Ang problema po kasi, maraming hindi naniniwala sa price ceiling. Yung mga magsasaka sa amin, sabi kahit ipaku pa yan ng ilang beses, kapag yung presyo namin ganun kataas, eh talagang hindi aabot. Kasi yung transport cost, yun ang rinerequest talaga ng, masu ng matinde. Kung tulungan daw sila sa transport at saka sa cold chain, kasi hindi nila maintindihan kung paano ibabaksak dun sa price ceiling na sinasabi. At yun nga, everyone is very, very interested about the opening of the special hog lanes. How exactly uh -oh. will they work or will it cause uh -oh. more havoc in the same way as it did during the ECQ and GCQ. Oh, merong sinabi ang DA na mag together with the other agencies of government that they will create a hug lane, di ba? Para mas mabilis. So, Ma so Ma ano ba yung hug lane, uh, Secretary? Before, Madam Chair, before before the hug lane, just a quick uh, intervention. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Sige, Senator Kiko. Ma'am, uh, Madam Chairperson, a question natin sa Department of Agriculture and perhaps also DTI. Uh, oh. A price freeze has already been established in the last uh, six months since uh, COVID dayo, eh, pandemic, hindi ba? Kung hindi na implementa yung price freeze, paano ma implementa yung price ceiling? Kasi ang price freeze dapat hindi na umaandar, hindi na umaangat. Kasi nga price freeze dahil emergency eh. Pero tumataas na tumataas yung presyo. So, hindi natin na-implementa yung price freeze which is, you know, during a pandemic that is uh, that is uh, allowed under the law, tumaas pa rin. So ngayon, magsisiling tayo. Paano natin ma-implementa yung price ceiling kung yung price freeze hindi natin na-implementa? Madam Chair. Madam, Madam Chair. Chair. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I think uh, the Philippine hog industry would like to to manifest para kay Secretary Dark. And we allow the Philippine hog industry to manifest. Uh, yes. Uh, one or two sentences lang dun sa manifestation po ni Senator Pangilinan. Okay, yung sige. Po, yung dating uh, price freeze ay nag-expire na. And that's why hindi magkaiba po itong price ceiling and price freeze. Yung price freeze is the first step determining the price, I mean the price ceiling is the first step na nirecommend po natin for approval in Malacanang. And from there, price they will freeze. now issue the executive order freezing the price at the ceiling within the period of 60 days lang po ang effectivity lang ng price freeze. 60 days lang po habang, habang nagmo-mobilize tayo ng iba't ibang food supplies. Ganun po. Uh, just a clarification. Uh, you're saying the reason why na-implementa yung price freeze pero dahil nag-expire, nawala na yung price freeze. Tama po ba yun? Kasi ang, ang pag- yeah, yeah. Tama po. Tama po kasi... Nung December lang, November, nagtaas yan. So, pa, pa, baba na yung, pawala na yung price freeze then So, uh, may tumaas na ang presyo nung mas lalo nung December. At sinustain na itong January po. 
Except, except that the emergency situation is still prevailing. Di ba? Hindi pa naman mini-withdraw yung presidential, yung executive order. So dapat, habang nandiyan pa yung emergency, nariyan pa rin yung price freeze. Bakit, bakit pa na-expire? That's why we are going back to Malacan yang kasi they issue the price uh, freeze order based on the price ceiling. Uh, medyo hindi maliwanag. Kasi iba yung price ceiling, iba yung price freeze. Uh, hindi ba? Hindi. Uh, Hindi magkaiba po yun, Sen, uh, Kiko. We initiate the price break para yun ang pagkakaroon po ng Malacan niyang to issue the price freeze under the Price Act. Okay, can we just get the data in terms of in terms of kailan yung price freeze, magkano yung presyo, at uh, as over time, parang ang pagkaintindi ko based on the data that we initially were reviewing, tumataas yung preso kahit na may price freeze. Hindi hindi sa tumaas dahil nag-expire yung price freeze. In other words, uh, yung pag-monitor ng pagtaas ng preso, medyo kulang yung yung uh, uh, yung pag-implement. That is my understanding, uh, secretary, but can we have the data? Because ito nasa data ninyo ayan no? from you the emergency was declared sick uh, kailan ba yung declaration ng emergency immediately in the big first quarter pa lang pero ayan no? September 270, umabot na ng, di ba? Uh, Pataas ng San Kiko, Madam Chair, that's why naging flat yung presyo nung uh, bago... Uh, but biglang tumaas. O, oh, tapos bumiglang tumaas. Uh, nung, I don't know, uh, there's something uh, wrong. Anyway, my, my sense, ma'am, just, just very quickly, is pag-aaralan... I think that maybe, ang DTI sanay sa suggested retail price at uh, pagmamonitor ng mga presyo. Nung panahon natin sa NFA, ganun din dahil sanay ang NFA noon na i-monitor ang presyo ng bigas. Uh, kaya meron talagang monitoring arm yan. Pero siguro ang DA, uh, hindi sanay sa pagmamonitor ng presyo, baka kinakailangan palakasin itong uh, pagmamonitor ng presyo at pag-i-issue nga. nitong mga revocation ng mga permit, sabi nga ninyo, nagsasamantala itong mga trader, ilang mga trader, hindi naman natin nila lahat. Pero kung yung mga yon dapat sana nagkaroon na ng uh, uh, suspension, investigation, hearing, pinatawag, para talagang uh, na nararamdaman ng industriya na ang uh, Department of Agriculture hindi hindi pwedeng paikutan. Diba? Opo, opo. May, may be recognized, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, uh, can we recognize uh, uh, former Congressman Nick Briones of uh, Batangas? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, kasi po na didinig ko kanina yung sinabing uh, farm gate price ng ating sekretary. Baka pong malayo yun sapagkat ang tumatakbo po ngayon sa, dito sa Batangas ay 220 pesos ang uh, per kilo. Ah, uh, yan naman po, hindi masasabing nga masyadong nagkumikita ang mga magbababoy sapagkat umaabot na po sa 100 uh, 180 pesos po yung production cost. Kasi kung bibili kayo ng bake, feeds, biosecurity, uh, umaabot po ng mga 180 pesos po ang uh, per kilo ng production cost. Ngayon, pag kayo po ay bumili ng baboy sa Visayas in Mindanao, Ang baboy po sa Bisaya sin Mindanao, kasama po namin yung Vice President doon ng Bisaya at Mindanao, umabot po na 180 to 200 pesos per kilo. So kung yan po ay dadalahin dito sa Metro Manila, aabot po ng 250 na. Dahil po sa shipping, sa mga mortality, uh, kaya po aabot ng 250. Pag yan po ay kinatay ng traders at yan po ay binenta sa retailers na sabi tulo, Abot na po yan ang 310 to 320 per kilo. So talaga pong pag tinatunga ng mga 50 pesos, yan po yung reasonable na, na patong ng retailers, eh talaga nga abot po ng 370. So yan po yung uh, katotohanan. Hindi po yung sinasabi na meron nag-hoarding kasi ang baboy po sa ngayon hindi niyo pwedeng i-hoard. Sapagkat uh, meron pong Africa Swine Fever, sino po ba yung magtatago ng baboy? Nagmamadali nga po kami magbenta, basta lumaki na. Kaya po merong nagbebenta 60 kilos, 70 kilos. Eh dapat po yan, 100 kilos eh. Pero yan po ang uh, epekto. Kaya yung pong hoarding sa mga parte po na magbababoy, 
Imposible pong gawin yan. At uh, yung just, traders, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I just want to ask question kasi inaaralan ko yung imported. Ang cost nila is something like 72 per kilo. Tapos kayo, sasabihin nyo, ilang kayo? One, ano? 180 ba? Y yes, ma'am. Ba't ganun kalayo? Oh, kasi we have to solve that. Yan yung competitiveness. Yan ang ginagawa namin sa rice ngayon eh. Ano, ano reason na ang, ang foreign, they can produce it something like 72, kayo 180? Ma'am, hindi, hindi, hindi po tayo naniniwala doon na 72. Kasi po... No, kasi nilalagyan pa nila ng tariff. Tapos yung ano pa... Tama po ma'am. Yan po yung study, eh. may, may study akong binasa eh. Tiningnan ko eh. 72 tapos lalagyan ng tariff. So 100 plus. Tapos lalagyan pa nung ano kasi manggagaling sa abroad. So may transportation cost. Kasi dapat malaman natin ano ba talaga ang cost natin relative to imported para mahabol natin yung cost ng imported para competitive tayo. At least... After the tariff and the transportation, competitive na dapat kayo. Para kahit na sila mag-open ng importation, hindi kayo takot kasi kaya nyo lumaban. Yun Tama ang po. gusto ko malaman, di ba? Para yung ba? halimbawa, may problema tayo, nasulbihin natin yung problema natin para competitive kayo. Para kahit sila magpa-import, wala tayong worry kasi we can compete. Yun ang ano. Yes, yes ma'am. Ang problema po ma'am, Yung pong i-declare na 76 pesos, sa tingin ko po may undervaluation dyan. Kasi po, tinanong ko po yung mga importer na lihiti mo, 3 to 4 dollars po ang karne ng baboy pag kayo nag-import yung karne mismo. So, ibig sabihin, 150 to 200 pesos po ang uh, presyo. So, meron pong undervaluation, yung pong technical smuggling. Uh, malaki po ang, uh, ang ating nangyayari dyan. Hindi lang po yon. Meron din po tayong misdeclaration. Yan po mga mechanicality bone meat, pots o pals, di yan po pinadadaan. Sa ali po na karne ang deklara, yan po, napakalaki po. Isipin po ninyo, pag itong tatlong taon, nag-import po ng chicken, uh, 1 billion kilos. Ang in-import po ng uh, mechanicality bone meat, 700 million, almost 70% po. So, naniniwala po kami kasi pagka po tiniklare niyo mechanically the bone meat, 5% lang po ang tarif. Oh yeah, I know that. Pagka po manok na na mismong karne ay 40%. Malaki po ang na na, 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 na iiwas nilang taripa. Sa baboy po ganun din. Sipin po niyo kung ang uh, ang presyo ng baboy ay 150 pesos ay dapat po yan 40%. So, 60 pesos po ang taripa. Eh, dinideklara po nilang opals. 30 pesos na lang po yung presyo ng opals. Eh, di pag inyo pong binigyan ng tarif ng 5%, ay 150 lang po ang binabayaran taripa. Madalit sabi po. So, maybe po we, can ask, we can ask the Department of Agriculture to make a study. Diba? Uh, to, so, to submit to us para we can devise a way by which we can help you be competitive and then ma-prevent natin yung mga ganyan na practices. Uh, maybe. Just uh, yes, yes, uh, Senator Kiko. Yes, kay Congressman Briones, baka pwedeng uh, bigyan nyo kami ng uh, dokumento tungkol dun sa undervaluation kasi sabi nyo may mga import okay. na 3 to 5 dollars pero binavalue lang ng 70 uh, 70 pesos o kaya wala pang uh, 1 dollar 72 na nakita ko eh after taxes 112 eh yeah, yun din ang nabanggit natin ma'am kaya nga po yeah, nung... nakita ko sa study eh Oo. Yeah. kaya nga ho ma'am nung nasa NF8 tayo bilang chairman talagang meron talagang uh, pwedeng ayusin dyan sa importation na yan at yakin na uh, tama ang preso at hindi itong undervaluation o technical smuggling talagang uh, talamak yan eh so uh, that we can help the livestock industry, diba? That is right. The local uh, livestock industry deserves a, a, a process of importation that is free of undervaluation and technical smuggling dahil papatayin talaga ang local na, na industriya pagkaganyan ang labanan. Hindi, Madam, tapa, Madam, hindi patas. Madam Chair? Madam Chair? Yes. Madam Chairperson? 
Ah, yes, yes. Salita, Sasabit ko kami sa inyo. Yes, uh, after you, uh, Senator Binay, after uh, former Congressman Briones, yes? Uh, yung pong, uh, da dapat po talaga tutukan yan. Yung pong uh, technical smuggling. At isasabit po namin sa inyo yung mga uh, yeah. presyo sa galing abroad at yeah. versus po sa presyo dinideklara ng mga importers. Okay. Bukas na po yung misdeklaration na sinasabi ko kanina. At uh, isa pa po yung ating pong ESF para po matigil yan. Dapat po bigyan ng bayad yung ating mga tinatamaan ng ESF. 10,000 per Talag head. Talagang binabayaran naman eh. Binabayaran kaya lang mabaga. <laughs> Kaya yung mga may ASF, kasi nangyari din yan sa amin dito sa Bacoor eh. Kaya yung mga ASF, inaano nila ipagbili na lang kasi mabagal ang bayad ng DA. Oo, kaya so, ang binabayaran po, nila, naghahawahan tuloy. Oo, yes. Ang binabayaran po yung 20 heads bilo lamang po ma'am. Yun po at inuutang pa ng matagal. Yun po naman. Yun, yun matagal ang bayad. Oo, oh, alam ko po. yun. Paano mo naman ililimit na 20 heads and below eh kung lahat yeah. may ASF? <laughs> Ta tama po. Wala pong tulong doon sa 100 heads, 50 heads, sa mga commercial. Kaya po, mabilis kumalat yung ASF. Dahil po, siyempre, mababangkrap ka ang iba po napipilit ang magbenta. Nung mga natitira pang buhay. At yung iba naman po, natakot. Kaya po yung 5 million heads na nawala, ang dahilan po, marami ho ay natakot. Nasa kabilang bayan pa lang, Nagtanggal na ho ng mga alaga sapagkat alam nila na pag tinamaan ang kanila ng African swine fever, wala naman pong tulong. Eh ang laki pala ng pera natin doon sa bayanihan to. Ay dapat po, yun ang inuna. Ang lagi po sinasabi ng Department of Agriculture, wala pong pera. Ay noong una po kami pa nag-abono eh. Actually 12 million po inabono namin ng tamaan yung Rizal. At saka nagtutulong din ang LGU dyan. Yung binabayad ng Department of Agriculture, I think uh, mga 5,000 pa o 6,000. Tumutulong 4,000 tapos ang LGU may ko, nagbibigay din. Kasi yan ang nangyari sa amin dito sa Bacor, nagbigay din ang LGU. Tama po. Ang, ang ano nga po, dapat po para matigil ASF, hindi po yung, kasi yung programa po ng ating DA, ay hindi pa rin, nung pa po yung sinabi namin, September 2019, pag hindi nyo binayaran lahat at tatamaan, at hindi kayo nagkalat ng malaking budget, mauunos yung baboy, mababaliwala po yung kanilang programa para matigil. Ano nga po ang nangyari? Ngayon po, kung hindi na naman po yan babayaran, yung pong natitira sa Pusayas at Mindanao, mauubos din po yan, yung 30% dito sa Luzon, Ganon din po ang mangyayari. Kaya dapat po, uh, malaki ang problema, dapat po mag-ala tayo yung pala naman may punto. Uh, you just make a report to us. Uh, can you please, uh, uh, former Congressman Briones, to submit a report to us on this so we will know, so we can discuss it with the Department of Agriculture kung paano magandang gawin. Diba? Yes, ma'am. I-submit po namin kung ano po yung uh, okay. kailangan namin may parating sa inyo, ma'am. We now recognize Senator Binay. Senator maraming, Binay. Mar maraming salamat, Madam Chairperson. Hindi, i for confirmation lang ako kay um, Secretary Dar, mm. tama po ba yung narinig ko na ang dahilan sa pagtaas ng preso ng bilihin ay hindi dahil sa shortage but more of market manipulation? Tama po ba? Let me clarify. Sig uh, siguro, Secretary Dar, can, siguro umisahin muna natin sa pork. Ano ho ba talaga? Uh, dahil ho ba sa shortage or dahil may nagmamanipula ng presyo? Nationwide, mayroon pa rin tayo very thin supply. Or, pero dito sa Metro Manila po, karamihan ang uh, talaga 12 billion na tayo. So, nagmamobilize po tayo sa kaling green zone areas. So, nakita po rin namin na may nagmamanipula. Ito po yun. Wholesalers yung mga biyahero. Pero, Secretary Dar, kulang din mo talaga naman ang supply ng local production for pork. Kulang dito sa Metro Manila po kasi uh, uh, galing ang supply sa mga green zone sa Pilipinas. Ito na po yung uh, mapa para makita po ninyo yung hug surplus sa uh, deficit area. 
So mayroon pa tayong surplus sa mga green phones and other Okay, and then pagdating naman po sa manok. Unan mo nga ito. Kulang ho ba ang local production? Ang, Or uh, it's more of market manipulation? Ang manok po ay yung pagtaas ng presyo biyang si SRP ay ito naman nagre-recover po ang poultry industry. Alam naman natin lugmok sila nung lockdown na sobrang lockdown ay pat talagang uh, lugi ang poultry industry. This time around, nag-adjust na kami. Yung SRP ay pa dati 1.30. Ngayon, ang uh, recommendation natin sa price ceiling for a price freeze ay 160. So, mag-adjust tayo po kasi nagre-recover ang po. Madam Secretary? Opo. Para ma mahina ako, pwede yung pa pakiulit? Yung sa chicken po, alam naman natin na uh, during last years, uh, nung nagumpisa ng pagpapalan namin uh, nagsara mga businesses sa restaurant, uh, talagang bagsak ang poultry industry last year. And uh, ngayon, they are starting to recover. Kasi doon sa Rust 8, mayroon rin tayong tulong na... Pili yung 890,000 unrest farmers mm -hmm. ng chicken and the stock. So ngayon, uh, price natin dati uh, 130, ina-adjust po natin. Uh, we'll go there sa tari. May tari. So secretary, yung sa manok, hindi ho dahil sa market manipulation. Hindi po. Hindi lang ang nagmanipulation. Doon. Uh, it's just adjusting to uh, the demand because the fishing na yung mga consuming public na iba towards chicken. So, pataas yung demand. Okay. Thank, thank you, Madam Chairperson. Madam Chairperson. Madam Chairperson. A quick interview. Uh, Very quick. Secretary, ay, Senator Pangilinan. Yes, uh, just for, for Secretary uh, uh, Dar, um, dapat siguro meron kayong interagency task force with BOC at yung yung uh, BAE para dito sa undervaluation uh, dahil nagre-recommend kayo na uh, buksan muli ang MAB at uh, pala palawigin yung importation. Eh baka mauwi dyan, puro undervaluation ang mangyari. Di, talo na ang BOF dahil bagsak ang collection, talo pa ang local industry dahil pumasok yung mga imported na mura. Tapos uh, yun na nga. Uh, problema na naman para sa livestock industry. Uh, is there a coordination between the BAE, the D BOC, or the DA, and the DOF regarding itong pagpasok ng mga importation ng uh, karne? Po, ma yung ugnayan ay uh, naan dyan, pero pinapagiging pa namin, nag-usap na kami kay Chairman... Hindi na lang tayo nito, ha? Mangina lang tayo niya sa Bimperegi yung report nila. Ang mga smuggled items. At saka dito sa undervaluation, uh, babantayan po natin yan. Yes, kasi uh, if I remember, Secretary, isang dahilan ba't pumasok yung swine flu dito dahil dyan sa mga smuggled at hindi na babantayan at uh, pinalalampas ng, uh, ng ating uh, regulatory agencies itong uh, imported na karne. Hindi po ba? Ganun katindi. Ganun katindi ang epekto ng, uh, ng hindi maayos na pagpapatupad ng ating mga regulatory agencies ng kanilang mga tungkulin. Ina-undervalue, pina, pinapayagan ng smuggling. Kaya, kaya nagkalat ang, uh, sabi nga nila, kaya nagkalat ang ASF dahil dyan sa smuggling na hindi nababantayan. Hindi po ba? Tama po yun. Uh, maraming smuggled items hanggang ngayon dumadating. At yun ang ay nakikita namin may ASF pa rin. Uh, Madam Chairperson, with the yes. Senator Tico related doon sa pinuputo niya. Kasi kung matatandaan mo natin, uh, Sen. Cynthia, di ba nung naghiring ho tayo sa bigas, ang reklamo ng BOC ay yung kakulangan ng tao. Ganun, ganun din ho ba yung problema natin pagdating din sa pork and other 
product. And siguro, ilan, ilan ho bang personnel ang uh, bae. Ang bae. nakalagay? <laughs> ang, ang bae, ang, ang, ang na, naka-assign dun sa mga iba't ibang uh, ports natin. Okay, ang ganito pong situation, we have minimum number of staff in our quarantine areas. Ang uh, problema is smuggling po. So alam naman ninyo, hindi dadaan sa normal process ng smuggling. Yung undervaluation, that's the responsibility of the Bureau of Customs. Ganun po. Yes. Remember correctly, and Senator Kiko, kung matatandaan mo, di ba doon sa bigas, yung, ano tawag doon, yung mga basag ba? Kasi yung walang PPI. technical, oh, di ba walang technical capability ang BOC? Uh, BOC, oh yeah. Tama po yun, uh, napag-usapan yun. Oh. So how do we empower them or how do we solve that uh, deficiency? Kasi I am sure, ganyan din ang problema natin doon sa technical smuggling when it comes to pork. Can I in, uh, inter, uh, no? Ma 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 yes. Kasi po, may malaki po tayong kakulangan. Yung po ang uh, tinatawag nating first border inspection facilities. Hindi na po natin na-check kung uh, ano po yung talagang dumarating. Kung na-undervalue, kung uh, uh, merong misdeclaration. At higit sa lahat po dyan, dahil wala po tayo niyan, yung pong iba't ibang sakit nakakapasok po sa Pilipinas sa mga alaga nating hayo pati po sa halaman mga pananim napapasok po tayo ng mga peste kasi po yung napakahalaga bago po sana mapapasukin dito sa ating bansa ang lahat ng ini-import ay wala po tayo niyan meron po tayong budget pero hanggang ngayon po 2019 yan po yung alam ni Sendo ay hindi po wala pa po tayong naitatayo ang may iwasan po sana natin, technical smuggling, dahil kami po pwedeng maglagay ng mga task force na pwede pong tumulong para po magbantay kung iisa po ang dadaanan. Pero kung hindi po namin alam kung saan dumadaan yan, eh hindi po natin talaga matutulungan bantayan yung uh, smuggling at saka yung pong sakit. Patuloy po so, uh, tanungin natin si Secretary Dar. Uh, kung uh, ano ba yung, wala ba tayong budget para dyan sa border facility na yan, uh, Secretary Dar? Ang um, uh, last quarter ng 2019, nag-approve uh, tayo sa cabinet at inapagpapan ng uh, mahal na Pangulo yung uh, budget ng limang uh, agricultural uh, agricultural commodity examination area yung ASEA po ang uh, nirelease ang nirelease uh, last year ay uh, isang para sa isa lang five, almost 500 500 million ang isang budget po ng first quarter at ito na ngayon ay under uh, TPA for the area at uh, ito ang tuwing po ang, uh, ang uh, implementasyon na uh, pag-declare na yung area, ready na po yung procurement. Uh, uh, Secretary Dar, bakit hindi nyo lagyan ng budget? Eh kung apat, ilan ba ang ano, lima? Lima times 500 million. O di 2.5 billion. Eh kung saan saan nyo lang linalagay ang 2.5 billion nyo eh. Katulad nung inyong ano, fertilizer. Ang laki-laki palagi ng budget niya. Pero lahat ng farmers sinasabi hindi dumadating sa kanila yan. O bakit hindi nyo bawasan yung lagyan nyo nito? Tapos bigyan na lang natin sila ng composting facility para they will make their own fertilizer. Kasi ang fertilizer niya, meron na naman nag-file na ano, naiimbestigahan na naman kayo sa fertilizer scam. Sawang-sawa na ako dyan sa fertilizer scam na yan eh. Bakit hindi nyo bawasan yan at maglagay na kayo nito para kailangan din niya ng rice, kailangan din niya ng pork, kailangan ng 
everybody in the agriculture. But hindi nyo lagyan ng budget. Two and a half billion eh. Composting. Ano? We will add uh, sa composting uh, facility. Yeah. Kasi, kasi, yeah, meron na naman nag-file na iimbestigahan na naman kayo sa fertilizer scam. Sawang-sawa na ako dyan sa fertilizer scam na yan. Uh, so, dapat, uh, turuan na lang natin silang gumawa ng sarili nilang fertilizer para hindi na tayo na iimbestigahan dyan. At dali mo na lang dito sa, ano yung iba, dito sa facility na to. Kasi ito ang palaging pinag-aawayan, eh, yung smuggling. At saka yung, ano, yung mga diseases na pumapasok sa ating uh, bansa. Eh, katulad yan, patay na patay na ang pork industry sa ASF. Katatapos lang nung avian plume, eh, ASF na naman. Ano na naman ang susunod? Madam Chair? Yes. Significant yes. alignment. Madam Chair? Sino yan? Ara Sendo? Ah, uh, sino to? Ah, uh, so, Sendo, uh, Mr. So. Okay, you recognize. Ah, uh, first yung ano kasi yung first border natin, kung wala pang facilidad, test, no? Yung test ng ASF, dapat tinetest yung mga dumadating na produkto. Hindi lang yung mga smuggled, pati yung mga dumadating kasi nasa sa food safety act yan eh, na dapat sinusuri yung mga dumadating na kargamento na uh, positive ba ito sa ASF, positive ba ito sa avian flu, hindi natin sinecheck yung lahat na dumadating na produkto. Other countries, kinagawa yan. Kung nag-export tayo ng banana sa China, pag sinek nila may bacteria, pinirecheck yan. Kagaya ng uh, bell yung ng chicken wing sa sa China nakita nila COVID positive may contamination binan nila so ganun din dapat tayo uh, wala tayong pagkasuri dun sa mga produkto na dumadating uh, uh, on, that, on that point lang uh, uh, Chair, on that point on that point just to immediately so meron yeah. pa tayong datos uh, Ms. Uh, Sendong ng yeah mga na-reject na mga karne. Meron ba tayong datos noon? Ang uh, BOC, meron ba? Uh, Secretary, sumulat kami kay uh, Secretary William Dahl. Nabigay sa atin yung, sabi kasi nila nagte-testing sila eh. Yes. No, so, Sulatan namin sila to give us the record. Yeah. yeah. Sumulat kami sa mga si kanya. Nilulot si Secretary Dahl. To give up record. Uh, anim na buwan na hindi pa binibigay yung record. <laughs> Tanya na patay ka. <laughs> okay. Who's that? Who's that? Who's talking? Si Mr. De Jesus. Uh, Who's yung... talking? Who's talking? Who's inter... Ano? Let us... Uh, Mr. So talk. Oo, i-off nyo muna yung inyong... Ano. Okay, go ahead Mr. So. Ma'am, in yeah. point, dapat isubmit ng uh, Secretary, Office of the Secretary ng Department of Agriculture itong mga datos tungkol sa mga nireject na imports because of quality. So yeah, that yeah. we have a sense uh, ano ba talaga ang uh, ngipin. And, and I think uh, we should force them to really uh, have a budget sa next budget na magkaroon ng border facility. Di ba? Finally, oo. Oh, oh. Kasi tayo rin yung gagawa ng budget. Huwag na tayong pumayag na walang border facility sa next budget. Ma Madam Chair, tsaka ano, kasi for example, no, yung mga nag-import ng fertilizer, uh, yung FPA yan, really required sa mga importer, mas hindi na gumastos yung, ano, eh, yung, uh, yung agency. Eh. Really required yung mga importer to, sub to submit the SPS percentage kung ito ba is yung quality tama so like this itong itong mga produkto na pupasok sa atin dapat sinecheck din ito ba ay may ASF ito ba is uh, contaminated with covid very important yan eh kasi pan tayo sinecheck natin mga tao kung papasok dito pero kung contaminated yung mga dumadating pwede yan ma-transmit sa tao Pwede Pati yung natin. coconut, hindi ba may sakit din yan na nanggaling sa Indonesia ba noon na nagkakas atin? 
Yes, Good na lang bumagyo. Nadala ng bagyo yung contamination sa coconut. Di ba malaking problema din natin yung coconut noon? Madam Chair, ako yung... Can I just recognize the presence of Senator Subiri? Uh, he's, he's online. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Just very Good morning, ma'am. Good morning po sa lahat. Good morning. Just very Senator quickly. Kiko, okay. Ma'am, tama po kayo. Yung uh, Coco Lisa noong 2014. Coco Lisa, yeah. Galing po yan uh, smuggled na na palm or na metal palm. Uh, and the, ang ano is from Indo Indonesia, hindi yan natutukan, nakapasok, uh, kaya nagkalat. Yung bagyo ma'am, uh, nakatulong ng malaki yun. Oo, oh, yung bagyo, nawala eh. Uh, mga kalahating milyong puno ang uh, na nagkaroon ng natural pruning. Oh. Kasi part of the part of the intervention is to prune. Yes. Nung tumaan ng bagyo, of the 2 plus million na uh, affected, kalahating million na prune dahil doon tumama yung bagyo. But oh, parang, course, tinuloy pa rin yung pruning doon sa areas na hindi tinamaan ng bagyo, bagyo. pero malaking bagay yung half a million trees dahil natural pruning ang ginawa ng bagyo. Okay, that's a no. Uh, yes. Senator Kiko. Yes. Salamat, yes. Madam Chair. Speaking po kasi of Baguio, eh, malaking dahilan po ng pagkakaroon ng stable na supply uh, ng pagkain para mapanatili din ang preso, ay eh, pwede pong itanong kung gusto po yung kalagayan ng production sa Bicol at Cagayan na sinalanta ng mga Baguio. Uh, nagawa na po ba yung mga nasirang irigasyon doon, ang mga daan, at iba't iba pang mga facilities para maibalik sa dati ang produksyon. Pati ang pagbiyahe ng mga ito para makaambag sa pagpapasagana sa agri and food supply. At uh, ganun din po sa Batangas. Andiyan po si dating Rep. Briones. Sa Batangas na nauna ng salata sa pagputok ng taal. Ilang porsyento na kaya ang natapos na reconstruction ng mga lugar na ito? Ang post-disaster rehab po, Madam Chair, ay nangyayari sa loob ng maraming taon. Maari bang tapusin ang mga ito kasama ang Marawi, halimbawa, bago pa matapos ang election ban sa 2022 at bago po matapos ang administrasyon. Uh, sabi po kanina kasi ni Sekdar, Madam Chair, whole of nation approach. So pati po dito sa pagtugon natin sa tungkol sa presyo ng mga pagkain kasama na po ang pork, Eh, kumusta po yung ating uh, disaster rehab para ma-recover yung agri-production capacities natin, Madam Chair? So we can ask Secretary Dar to answer? Yes, please, Madam Chair. Salamat po. Tamang-tama po yung uh, katanungan ni Senator. Uh, yung uh, last quarter, di ba, binagawin po, po ang mga big world. Dati to, mga region. So, uh, parang tama naman, hindi siyempre ay nagpano na kami para dito sa rehabilitation. At yung budget na rehabilitation po ay yun na... Sekdar, very spotty po yung audio nyo. Importante pa naman yung sagot nyo. Hello po. Hello. Mahina, mahina, Secretary Dar. Lakasan nyo yung audio. Can, can you do properly? Ha? May problema sa audio. Hindi uh, uh, po dyan sa iba kung pwede. Mas maganda lahat ng meeting. Uh, ang chairman lang ang hindi naka-unmute plus the speaker. Opo, salamat po ulit. Ang Mas mabuti na po, Sek. Po, opo, uh, Senator Risa, mara, ma, magandang umaga po. Yes, uh, our Madam regional po. field offices... Uh, nangyari pa nung uh, itong Enero na na nag-coordinate uh, na sila sa mga provincial and uh, other local government units. So uh, we used the budget starting 2021 plus yung QRF funding natin. So yun po ang uh, binibigay po natin sa mga iba't ibang apektado dito po sa Luzon. So automatic naman yun ang ginagawa po ng DA na yung QRF funding ang unang gagamitin then followed by the uh, appropriations na nakukuha po natin. So tuloy-tuloy po yun ang pagrehabilitasyon. 
sec, wow, isang follow-up lang. Mga nasa ilang porsyentong natapos na po yung rehab dun sa mga damage na agri-facilities at infra kasama na po yung directly nag a sa pork industry natin. At matatapos na po ba iyon by election ban or at least by end of admin? Well, yung mga infrastructure na po na masyadong uh, naapektuhan talaga you need Uh, you cannot do it now kasi uh, hindi naka-allocate, walang pundo na naka-allocate. So only those that we can repair, yun po ang bibigyan namin ng uh, pundo para magamit agad. At uh, doon sa mga additionally funding coming from OCD doon sa disaster, yun po ang gagamitin natin once they're ready and uh, released. Salamat, Sec. Dar. Salamat, uh, San Kiko. Salamat, Madam Chair. Siguro uh, itulak pa rin ng komite uh, maging mas proactive pa yung DA uh, at ibang uh, attached agencies nila para dun sa repair ng uh, salanta ng iba't ibang sako na para talagang suportahan yung recovery ng lahat ng agri subsectors kasama na po yung sa uh, pork industry. Salamat, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair? Madam Chair? Madam Chair? Nako. Oh. <laughs> Madam Chair, hindi. Uh, sorry. Madam Chair? Yes? Hindi, related lang ko kay dun sa... Yeah, okay. Uh, Senator Bina. Sa, uh, for submission lang ho ng uh, DA kung uh, ano na ho yung status pagdating dun sa Taal Volcano Eruption nung rehabilitation nila para mas alam ho natin yung detalye. Taal think... Volcano, yung mga nagdaang bagyo. We will submit, Madam Chair. Thanks. And I think we should ask the NR also and uh, the PWH may additional budget sila dyan, eh, in addition to to DA, especially sa infrastructure at saka sa mga river. Uh, may additional budget and DNR at the PWH. Madam Chair, hindi rin po please uh, uh, lahat yung copy ng mga report na iyon. Salamat okay. po, Madam Chair. So we we move that uh, they will submit a report on the status of their uh, rehabilitation of those uh, na na destroy ng uh, typhoon, ng volcano plus uh, yung na uh, damage ng ASF and then uh, makita natin bigyan lahat ng kopya ang mga senador ng kanilang rep ng report ng DA. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, Mr. Chester Tan ng uh, National Hog Farmers Association is uh, requesting that they be heard. Okay, so we recognize Dr. Uh, Mr. Chester Tan. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Senators. Uh, thank you for giving us a chance. So, just a few few minutes of uh, manifestation. Uh, first is uh, I want to clarify the cost uh, structure that uh, the DA have made for the, the swine producers and um, I will not uh, reiterate or uh, uh, our Madam Chair on, he, on her opening statement, he, she already read uh, the letter submitted by the National Federation of Hog Farmers Inc. and the view of uh, the stakeholder. Just We, we we want to we want uh, uh, we want to understand the consumer side uh, with all the agri products increasing. Uh, uh, medyo mahal na po yung mga produkto ngayon. Uh, but uh, as the, our DTI Secretary Mon Lopez uh, have said, and we have discussed this a uh, few days ago uh, in the meeting. Um, uh, as a producer side, uh, we want to explain that. Uh, We invested a lot on the livestock industry and uh, continue to invest even with the high inputs. Remember, po, uh, our inputs right now is tripled for breeders to begin with. And the raw materials imported and local uh, increase by 20 to 30 percent, especially imported uh, uh, raw materials like soybean and other imported uh, raw mats. And our business right now, uh, before the ASF, Our risk cost is around 5 to 10 percent only. But uh, right now, uh, with the post-ASF uh, problem, uh, we add the risk cost of uh, almost 30 to 40 percent. Ano pong uh, uh, purpose? What is the reason behind that? Uh, bakit po kailangan merong uh, allowance or uh, margin 
Um, this is to encourage all the um, stakeholder or the uh, live tax swine, especially in Visayas, Pindanao, to continue to continue the business na wag pong tumigil. So, nabanggit na po kanina, dito po sa Luzon, uh, we are left with 25% uh, producers. But Visayas, Mindanao, we want to protect kasi po nasa 90% pa po. Uh, maliit lang po ang uh, kuminto. So, uh, maybe on this uh, day, the producers will, yung offer po na the producers will go to importation uh, sasalin na kami doon sa mga importer maybe in the future baka po sumali yung mga producer but remember kami po mga producer we are uh, pro, pro local talagang uh, gusto namin paraginhin ang local if in case if in case po na, uh, na mag-import meron tayong kasama sa local producer na gusto mag-import ang gusto rin po nila is magkaroon ng tariff Oh, kasi po, ang tariff, very important po yun, kagaya ng mga sinabi ng um, ating mga senator, na ang tariff po ang pinagkukunan natin ng pondo ng ating gobyerno. Pag tinanggal pa po yung tariff, eh, wala na po tayong mapagkunan. So, kahit po mag-import, eh, kailangan po uh, we pay our, uh, our tariff. And of course, we want to continue no, our uh, communication with the uh, Department of uh, Agri Agriculture. So, Really, uh, the same way as a local business producer who also pay. Kami po, nagbabayad po kami ng taxes. Sabi nga po ng mga member namin sa dito sa Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao. Sa commercial lang po, ah, the backyard sector is uh, mas kabisado po nila small scale. Mas kabisado po nila uh, Chairman Rosendo and uh, Kaniki Briones. But for the commercial stakeholder, uh, as much as we want to request na pag-usapan po namin yan sa ating gobyerno for a few years or five years of tax exempt. But we know our government need our taxes badly. So we just continue na lang po. Hindi na lang kami hingin. Hayaan na lang nyo po kami dun sa aming uh, margin and we will not ask for any ano, uh, exemption sa taxes. Pero sana ganun nga po. Pero kailangan nga makatulong tayo sa gobyerno. E saan pa kukuha ng pondo. And uh, also, uh, pinapaalam din namin, our neighboring countries dito po sa Asia, they also suffer the same thing. Mataas rin po ang mga presyo nila, lalo rin po sa swine. So, pare-pareho po tayo lahat. Ngayon, itong, ano, uh, lastly, I, I want to mention regarding dito sa price freeze or uh, ceiling or cap. Maybe the suggested price of uh, Department of Culture is too low. Of course, ayaw rin po namin yung 400 plus, eh napamahal naman po yung sa wet market na 400 plus. Pero 310 is, I think, uh, too low for uh, for uh, Luzon. Dapat po yung kanina binanggit po ni Madam Chair uh, Cynthia Villar na at least man lang at uh, 330 ba, or 340 to uh, 360, 370. And then, uh, ito na po yung tanong kanina, saan po nang gagaling, bakit po mahal uh, sa retailer po ba, wet market vendor, sa trader po ba, o producer. So, very short lang po, uh, yung sa wet market po, I can speak in producer, uh, I'm not sure ako, but I can give a little pointers regarding the traders or uh, yung wet market vendors. Siguro po, mas maganda makapag-interview tayo ng talagang mga traders and uh, wet market. Pero ang analyze po namin yan, uh, Madam Chair, Yung wet market po, dati po, nagbebenta ako ng uh, sampung ulo, nagiging lima. But my expenses, rental, is the same. So, for me, as wet market vendors, talagang dadagdagan ko po yung margin as a, a businessman o businesswoman. Ganon din po yung sa trader, yung nagpaparating po ng galing Visayas Mindanao na 200 heads, 100, nagiging kalahati. So, meron po mga risk factor po doon. So y y yun po yung ano kaya siguro nagiging mahal doon sa trader and uh, wet market. Of course, pwedeng tanungin natin sila mismo para malaman natin bakit ganun yung margin nila. I can speak of our ano lang uh, producer. So sana ang hiling namin is parang siguro bonus na lang po sa ating mga stakeholder yung margin na sabi kong may additional risk cost. And 
itatanong nyo po sa amin, bakit ang bakit po kayo maglalagay ng risk cost kung before is uh, 5 to 10 percent? Bakit po ngayon gusto nyo nasa 30 or 40 percent? Hindi ba masyadong malaki po yan? Yung 30 to 40 percent. Ang, ang sagot po namin dyan is we just base this on uh, doon po sa programa ng uh, Department of Agriculture yung sa uh, I think crop insurance uh, agri insurance something na pag if in case what happened to the business 40% lang po yung makukuha ng value so for our stakeholder kasama ng small scale para mabuhay sila we have to add our risk cost na tinatawag kasi yun lang din po ang makukuha namin again ang commercial farm po wala pong makukuha if in case something happen to their business. So we, uh, we are at our own risk. And yung doon naman po sa small scale, I'm not sure kung yung small scale kasi maraming kategory yan. Eh. Uh, hopefully matulungan din sila ng ating uh, 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 gobyerno. And lastly, doon po nabanggit ni, ng, uh, ni Secretary regarding those of uh, yung price uh, i think from karada is 130 as low as 135 but i think karada from the bai uh, yung bai uh, data since last year i'm not sure kung meron po silang naparating dito sa sa luzon uh, 1% or even uh, 0%. So dapat po, ang basis po natin ng presyo is doon po sa majority. For example po, the price of Mindanao is ranging from 180 to 200. So doon po tayo mag-range. Kasi po, pag kinuha natin yung law, eh, pero 1% o 2% lang sila, eh hindi po siya masyadong makakatulong sa pag-stabilize ng ating price. Again, very last is, hindi rin po kami papayag doon sa sobrang taas na presyo na 400. Pero Inihiling na namin sana yung Department of Agriculture, tama po sabi ni Secretary Mon, na mag-adjust lang kasi dahil po sa inputs natin, eh, mahal na rin po. Para po hindi mag-give up yung mga kasama natin sa Visayas, Mindanao, and dito po sa Luzon, they will think of repopulation. Kasi po pag hindi, yung target po natin na 5 to 7 years to recover 100% dito pa sa Pilipinas, eh baka po matatagalan pa, abutin tayo ng... Uh, ng uh, 10 years pagka hindi po naging maganda ating progr programa. So marami pong di nakakalam to. Hindi po to next month maaayos na or next year. 5 to 7 years po for recovery. Reality po ito. Uh, we have to admit. Thank you po Madam Chair for my time. Unless Madam, Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Oh, Madam Chair. Shubiri and then uh, Senator, ay rather uh, Mr. San Diego. Okay. Senator Aimee. Uh, hi, Aimee. Uh, I'm willing to, I'm willing to uh, allow Senator Aimee, ladies first. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, para matapos na yung usapin sa presyo, saan ba galing yung uh, baboy na sinasabi ng DA na sa 132 pesos? Totoo ba yan? Saan ba galing yan? Kasi pareho kami ni uh, former Congressman Briones, pareho rin kami ni na Chester, na ang pagkalam namin 180, tapos papalo ng 210 to 220. Saan ba yung farm gate na 132? Yan ba yung mahiwagang baboy galing sa Jensen daw? Uh, we recognize Sen uh, Secretary Dar. Opo ma'am, let me give it by region para yung basehan natin. By region. Pero yung 132 lang kasi ano ba yung ano ba talaga yung pinakamarami? Yung sa 70%, 60% ng Pilipinas, ano yung farm gate? Doon na tayo magbase para matapos na yung usapin ng price control. Opo, opo sana I mean. Na lang yung mga isolated incident kasi hindi ko maniwala sa 132 nakakahimatay po. Let me again make the clarification. Uh, okay, ang farm gate price ay break even po. I mean, let me recast. Ang break even point for uh, the hog farmer ay 105 pesos. Marami pong aalma sa 105 pesos. Post of production po yun. 
Naku po, maraming ang alma dyan. Parang uh, sa feeds pa lang, tapos sa uh, biik, parang mabigat yata yung 105, hindi yata masyadong makatotohanan. Well, that's that's what we, we have been monitoring all this time, Madam Senator. Okay, but 105, I see Chester is getting agitated together with Rosendo. Pati po ako, nagigitla dahil uh, si Congressman Briones, nakangisi rin pareho kami eh. Hey, so, ano? Ang mga datos po natin, can you give me the chance? Yes po. Sen Aimee, with your permission, baka pwede isite ni Secretary Dar kung saan lugar yung 105, kung saan lugar yung 105. Yung 132, yung 132, saan ba yun? Kasi nung una narinig ko, Jensen daw eh. Okay. Sen Aimee, baka naman sa baka naman sa barm yan. Walang kumakain ng baboy sa barm. Ang murang baboy. Wala nga lang papalaki eh. Ito po yung... Galing po sa mga regional field offices natin, uh, Farm Gate Price, Saibuni. Cordillera Region, average is 170 pesos. Ang uh, Ilocos Region po, ang average ay 172 pesos. Ang Magayan Valley po ay 180 pesos. Ang Central Luzon ay 170 pesos. Ang Calabar Zone ay nasa 230 pesos. Average With much respect, Secretary, sa Cagayan at sa Casabicol Region, wala nga mabili eh, kasi underwater pa po sila. <coughs> yun, po yung, yun po yung ongoing po, please. Paki, please give me the chance, Senator Aimee, to read okay. everything. Now, Mimarupa region, average 150. Meron na, uh, doon meron 130 minimum hanggat 170. So, average lang inano natin. Averaging ito po. Bicol region, 144 pesos. Western Visayas, 134 pesos. Ang uh, Central Visayas, 150. 150 pesos. Eastern Visayas, 139 pesos average. Region 9, Sambuanga Peninsula, 160. Region 10, Northern Mindanao, 131 pesos average. Dabao Region, Region 11, 170. Soksarjen, Region 12, 170. Region 13, Caraga, 185. Yun po. Mataas. Yun po, mas mataas sa Caraga. Ang bar may, tama yung sabi ni Senator uh, Subiri. Ayaw hindi na. <laughs> Madam Chair and Secretary, with all due respect, uh, uh, Mukhang medyo outdated yata yung ibang datos natin. And uh, even if there's perhaps incidental uh, evidence that uh, 130, 132 was the price per kilo of pork in certain areas, uh, it probably was in such minuscule amounts as to be insignificant. Sana i-focus na lang natin sa larger volume doon sa universe of pork prices at doon tayo magbase para matapos yung usapin tungkol sa price control. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Madam, Madam, Madam Chairwoman? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, majority floor. Sure, sure, Nancy. And then, Go ahead, please. Just ano lang, another request for submission kasi parang may question mark dun sa kung paano nila nakuha yung presyo. Baka the BA can submit yung methodology na ginagamit nila when they get, how they get itong mga presyo. For submission lang po, Madam Chairperson. Okay, we move that the the DA would submit uh, yung methodology nila sa pagkuha ng price of pork by region. Okay? Thank you, Madam Chair. May I... Uh, yeah, we recognize Senator Miggs. 
First of all, maraming salamat po, Madam Chair, sa pag-take up ng issue na to. Maraming po tayo mga kababayan, nahirap na hirap. Sa presyong bilihin na yun, hindi lamang sa karne or pork, pati lahat-lahat na ay umakyat na. So, it's a problem of inflation that we have to address. But uh, I would like to greet my dear friends, uh, Secretary Dar of the DA, sir. Good morning. And of course, and Supermon Lopez, my dear, dear friend of... Uh, Pareho po kaming white hair na, na Secretary Mon Lopez of uh, the DTI. Together with our colleagues from uh, the different uh, areas, Senator Aimee, Senator Binay, uh, and Senator Kiko. And of course, sa mga stakeholders na nandito po na yun, nakikita ko of course si Sir Nick, uh, si Sir Sendong, and uh, Stephen, uh, er, uh, Yusek uh, Ordones. Uh, of course, to kay Chester and uh, all the others that are present. Magandang umaga po. Uh, ang magandang umaga po. And uh, the, there's a few points lang, Secretary, uh, that I'd like to raise with you. Of course, I commensurate with you with the problems now. No? Aside from the pandemic, napaka, napakahirap uh, gumalaw sa ating bansa at napakahirap uh, magpadala ng uh, iba't ibang goods to and fro different areas of the Philippines. I think um, the problem of the shortage of pork, kaya nagmamahal po dito sa Metro Manila, Madam Chair, Sa amin po sa Mindanao, we have uh, supply, no? steady supply, lalo na mga areas na hindi pa tinatamahan ng ASF. Ang problema namin, Secretary, ganito, and alam po ni Secretary uh, Lopez ito, the cabotage law, the law that uh, limits the amount of ships that ply to and from the Visayas and Mindanao, I laud your plan to have an ASF or rather a pork highway, no? an ASF-free highway, wherein our goods can go from Mindanao Visayas to Luzon, which is badly needed right now in terms of port. No? Ang problema, napakamahal at napakahirap magdala po ng uh, produkto galing sa amin po sa inyo. Unlike in Ilocos, you can just go with the highway and uh, diretso pababa south or even Bicol north. Sa amin po, lalagay pa, ilalagay pa yan sa reefer vans, dadalin pa po sa uh, ikakarga po yan sa mga barko. Or kung hindi, magroro. Ang problema naman po, Secretary, pagroro po sa kanila, pagpabalik, wala po silang karga, napakamahal ng shipment. Because definitely, kung wala po silang may karga, pabalik, ay uh, talagang uh, dodoble po ang gastos nila. So, uh, we have to figure out how we can do that. Maybe you can talk to the shipping companies, uh, uh, Secretary, to come up with special lanes for pork, chicken, and meat, even vegetable products, para makarating po siya sa Manila na hindi ganun kalaki ang gastos. I think that will will be helpful. Is that a doable, Secretary? Baka you can, together with Secretary Mon Lopez, kasi kaibigan naman ni Secretary Mon Lopez, lahat ng may-ari ng mga barko, from Gotong Lines to, uh, uh, of course, Dennis Uy of... Uh, I believe to go, nasa kanya na yata yung to go, yung Chelsea Logistics. Baka there's a way that we can have special lanes to augment your pork highway uh, para magkaroon po ng uh, deliveries po sa Luzon. Uh, what could you say, uh, Secretary? Would that be helpful? Madam Chair, uh, can I respond? Madam Chair. Oh, go ahead, Secretary. Yes, please. Oh, uh... Maraming salamat, San Mig, sa very uh, important intervention. And let me highlight kung ano, ano na po yung ginagawa po natin in relation to that. In connection with the mobilization ng food supplies from Visayas and Mindanao, marami na tayong ugnayan with the Department of Transportation and the uh, PPA Marina and the private shipping lines. So nag-provide na po sila ng special space doon sa mga barko at reduce, if not, uh, very significant uh, rate reduction. At the same time, kami, pa rin, kami rin sa uh, DA, ay, we are subsidizing where need be kung uh, so, ganun po ang temporary uh, uh, response po natin doon. Habang yung kabutad flow ay dapat um, uh, we, we have really to strengthen and, and uh, look at this as an economic uh, uh, intervention by way of having to see to it 
the transportation costs of agricultural and food supplies coming from Visayas and Mindawa, Mindanao must be given uh, preferential uh, uh, para mas marami yung uh, pag-move pag, uh, uh, move ng food supplies from one surplus area to the next. Uh, we will do that. I mean, we need some amendment of the law and we will do what is possible under the executive department. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary. Actually, with the intervention of Secretary Mon Lopez, the two of you, probably the DTI and the DA, can negotiate and dialogue with the ship owners already para kung pagkain po, uh, priority lanes po siya. Hindi po siya. Ang nangyayari minsan kasi kung pagkain, kung uh, uh, minsan nagkakaroon ng problema sa traders then uh, hawak na po nila yung mga shipment ng uh, 40-foot containers. By the time that the shipment of food or products, food products are in the pier, minsan dalawang araw po sila naghihintay doon. Bulok na po yung pagkain. Kaya hindi po siya napaprioritize. So maybe you can work out a MOA or an understanding of agreement uh, some sort with these shipping companies para mapabilis po yung, yung transfer. At least some sort of suggestion. Kaya na po yan, Secretary, while we're amending the law, we're trying to amend the law, uh, we will, we will maybe have... on your level. Opo. We will Thank you, that. Secretary. And another concern is, yung problema po natin, alam mo, I, I commensurate, first of all, I'm so sorry to hear about what had happened to our Luzon um, tra uh, producers of pork. Marami po ang kaibigan, apektado. I know them very well. They lost uh -huh. billions. Huh? Yung private uh, producers lost billions of pesos. Meron po akong kaibigan in depression palagi. Hindi ko na babanggitin kung sino, pero they lost millions, tens of millions and billions worth of uh, stock and uh, trying to recover is so difficult for them. I am happy that... Uh, uh, we believe in uh, continuing the industry kasi mahirap naman magsira na altogether ang mga producers sa uh, Luzon at uh, and even some areas of Mindanao medyo natatamaan na rin kami kaya, kaya kami sa Bukid noon takot na takot kami because in our boundary in Davao meron na pong ASF Jensan meron na so we're really strict in our uh, biosecurity measures but uh, again no, it only takes one uh, individual na hindi po uh, ingat at magpakanin baboy doon sa kanilang lugar. Buti yeah. sa amin, we, we already made sure na bawal na po yung kanin baboy and we've talked to all the producers, large and small, na wag na pong gawin yun para ma-avoid natin yung ASF. But um, a problema, Secretary, is restocking. I talked to, um, okay lang po yung large producers kasi meron po silang breeding stock. They do uh, breeding stock. But even their imported breeding stock will run out eventually at magkakaroon po ng inbreeding, no? Uh, eventually, line breeding, magkakaroon ng inbreeding, magkakaroon ng defects, lalo na sa mga small uh, producers. Ang sabi po nila, hirap na hirap <coughs> po sila makakuha ng panibagong uh, stock for restocking. Um, so that is a big problem. So we have to figure out how we can also get uh, uh, stock once again to restock the farms that were hit by ASF but have no longer... Medyo yan ang uh, isa sa mga problema, Secretary. At least I'm just putting this forward. These are what the complaints have been given to me by our producers in Mindanao. Uh, you, you can answer a bit later. But I see a light in the end of the tunnel. Um, I see a light in the end of the tunnel, uh, Secretary. And uh, I know my dear uh, stakeholders are know about this kasi yung pasahan po namin ng uh, information about this. This is the um, ASF vaccine that was produced in Vietnam. Apparently, meron na pong vaccine here. Let me just read the news item. Vietnam completed a study and pilot program for its vaccines for African swine fever and expected to start commercial production the second quarter of this year. Secretary, apparently it was quite successful. Uh, it is done by the NAT Navetco National Veterinary or JCS Navetco under the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Ang galing-galing nila doon sa Vietnam. Imagine na uh, maybe we should ask our DOST and the DA to partner up. Maybe we can also develop our own vaccines, no? uh, taking cue from Vietnam, or we buy these vaccines from Vietnam government to government, G2G. Secretary, uh, it's a fellow C, Southeast Asian neighbor. We have an ASEAN protocol in place. Alam po ni Secretary Monyan. 
I'm sure Secretary Mon can help you. We can talk to the trade and the uh, agriculture ministers of uh, Thailand. Uh, humingi na tayo, magpila na po tayo, pumila na po tayo. And I think, um, uh, I believe we have a, a good chance of uh, being able to work with Vietnam because uh, our brother Muslims in the region, I don't think Malaysia and uh, Indonesia really have a large, uh, I'm not sure, I may be wrong, but they don't. I don't think that they have a large uh, uh, pork industry, knowing fully well that maybe 90% of their population are kapatid natin na Muslim. But um, Vietnam, Thailand, Philippines can really take advantage of this, Secretary. Have you heard about this vaccine being developed in Vietnam, Secretary? Madam Chair, can I respond? Yes, uh, send me na balitaan ko at tinatawagan na namin yung Minister of Agriculture doon kasi yung Deputy Minister ay uh, kaibigan po natin. And at the same time, U.S. po ang tumulong sa kanila and we have been uh, making that uh, interaction dialogue with USDA. So material transfer agreement ang gagawin na lang, mas mabilis, USDA can facilitate a technical grant. So uh, on train na po, in train na po yung, uh, yung proseso na pag-testing uh, yung na-develop sa Vietnam with the assistance of U.S. Uh, dito sa vaccine, the vaccine against ASF. Uh, Doon po sa breeder stock na nasabi po ninyo, Senator Miggs, that's part of the repopulation plan na mayroon tayong mga uh, multiplier breeder farms para na yung mas magandang mga breeds ang ipamimigay po natin sa backyard hog racers. Thank you, Secretary. Just a bit of information lang, uh, uh, additional on, on this uh, vaccine. Banggitin uh, ko lang po, yung Vietnam National University of Agriculture started research researching a vaccine last March and so far has developed four vaccines, one of which has shown encouraging results out of the 13 of the 14 pigs tested. So napakaganda po yung resulta, almost over 90 plus percent yung uh, efficacy. So yan siguro, Secretary, maganda po yan. Uh, let's work on that, uh, government to government. Uh, uh, baka pwede rin natin i-produce yan dito. Uh, whatever is the pleasure of the Vietnam government, para lang mabigyan natin ng bakuna ating mga uh, uh, livestock, particularly pork uh, or pig products here in the Philippines so that they can start fresh and start new. And hopefully, pag nabakunahan na po lahat itong ARS na ito, hindi na makabuhay, mabubuhay ang ASF, eventually, mawawala din yung ASF uh, sa ating bansa. And um, yun lamang po, it was just some point of information. And on the issue of importation, Secretary, Request lang po namin, if importation will be allowed, um, sana po yung traders na mag-import po ng, uh, ng, uh, ng uh, pork ay idala po sa mga areas na apektado talaga. In other words, where there are uh, high, um, high prices of pork, uh, particularly in Luzon. Because uh, baka mga pumasok sa aming area yan, sa northern Mindanao, na medyo reasonable naman po yung price of pork doon ay lalong babagsak po ang presyo ng pork dun sa kanila. Uh, they're not naman experiencing the 400 peso per kilo prices of Metro Manila. For example, in Cagayan de Oro, the prices there are between uh, 250 to 280 uh, or 300, pinakamataas na yan. Pero pag pumasok po yung uh, imported pork dyan sa lugar na yan, ay definitely babagsak din ang po presyo. So sana po yung mag-import ng ating pork ay uh, dito lang po sa mga areas na kulang na kulang at wala pong pork available uh, so that we that, that we can stabilize the prices uh, in these areas. Can I get a commitment, Secretary, on that? On the last point raised, uh, Senator Mig, I very solid yun. So, uh, dapat uh, ang direction po natin. Doon din sa ASF vaccine, uh, we... As I said, uh, tamang -tama, we will exhaust all uh, possible ways to have this as soon as possible and develop, uh, do the testing here and uh, pass even the vaccine over here. We, we have uh, initial estimate of the value of vaccine that we 
needing to cover all and sundry the hugs in the country. So, handa po tayo doon. Maraming maraming salamat, Secretary. Before I go, Ms. Madam Chair, I would just like to say uh, thank you once again. And I forgot to greet uh, Risa. I forgot to mention Risa Oteveros, my fellow advocate uh, Hello, of uh, uh, nutrition and feeding for our people. Maraming maraming salamat, Secretary. And... Uh, Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Madam Chair, with the indulgence of the Majority Leader. Uh -huh. I just want to make a comment na siguro pag nag-import yes, tayo, huwag mo naman tanggalin yung tariff kasi that's the protection of our local. Oh, oh. They can compete naman we, even we, with the tariff. Oh, oh. Huwag naman natin tanggalin ng tariff. The, yung pinag-import natin, okay na yon. Pero yung tatanggalan ng tariff, medyo kawawa na yung mga local uh, ano natin, producer. Kasi uh, hard hit na nga sila. Tapos eh, pakukumpit mo pa yung walang tariff, eh, hindi na sila makaka-recover niya. Yun lang ang manifestation ko, Secretary Dar. Madam Chairperson, Madam Chair. importation? On the uh, yes. Yes, very quickly lang, ma'am. We may be also request on the issue of importation para lang na monitor natin itong uh, mga nag import at uh, yung oh. volumes. Can we have the list of those who have imported uh, 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 various meats last year from the Bahi? And mm -hmm. who are going to be applying this year if, if, uh, if they are going to uh, avail of that increase? in the mag sino sino yang mga yan para ho na mo monitor natin ma'am the bai can submit to the committee ma'am okay uh, can you uh, we will have to ask DA to submit to us who are importing the list of importers and would be importers so, for 2020 for, those who are applying for 2021 who imported for, for, from in 2020 and those who will be importing in 2021 and so the, i will uh, yes yes I will recognize Senator Risa, but I want to manifest that after Senator Risa, we we recognize Attorney Bong Inchong of the Broilers Association of the Philippines, then Mr. Ernesto Ordonez from Ali Aliansang Agricultura, and Mr. Jess Chan from the Meat Importers Association. So we recognize... Mom, uh, I was supposed to be following uh, Senator Amigs, uh, Mr. San Diego. Uh, yeah, said, yeah. Well. Uh, so... Yeah, Mr. San Diego, yes. Uh, Mr. San Diego, Mr. Inchong, Mr. Ordonez, and then Mr. Chan. Okay, we recognize Senator Risa. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's a follow-up question. Madam, Madam Chair, Senator Risa, yeah. Senator yes. Risa, with your permission, can I just make a very quick statement? Because we are bring the finalizing to eight, so I have to leave this hearing. Yeah. So would it be All right, okay? Madam Chair. All right, Chair. Yeah. A minute. Thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to put on record that even in the discussion on create, um, we have included agriculture as part of the incentivized activities. And this is in line no, with uh, the recommendation of our majority floor leader, Senator Tico, uh, Senator Risa, Senator Villar, um, who are all agriculture advocates, and in line with my Committee on Sustainable Development Goals and Future Education. Um, we to ensure that uh, Senator, Senator Pia, we cannot hear you. Senator Pia, uh, you check your signal. We cannot understand. Okay na po o nawala rin? Meron na, meron na. Nawawala kasi. No, we can hear you now. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. I said good now. Okay. So I just want to know that that is in tier one and also in tier two receive the highest incentive on uh, the use of technology and uh, state-of-the-art agriculture. So I would like to also mention this to the good, the good uh, um, secretaries of uh, um, um, BA especially, but also DPI, that ngayon pa lang maghanap na tayo ng mga investments dyan. Kasi um, the problems that we face now uh, will, will continue to a certain extent, but if we can also improve our efficiency to the use of this kind of technology, advantage of this, this law that we will pass, it will be a step in the right direction. And finally, I'd just like to commend uh, Secretary Lopez when he mentioned the different SRPs, no? 
for uh, various um, uh, sales points. Kasi I encountered this problem with uh, um, medicines way back about 10, 15 years ago na ang sinisisi yung mga butika. And yet, uh, it's really the wholesalers who were not able to extend price differentials to them uh, when it came to senior citizens' discount. I'm just saying that it's a very similar problem na to kill the messenger. No? They would attack the, the, retail, the retailer and yet at the different points of distribution from the manufacturer to the distributor, and doon may mga price issue. So I appreciate na binanggit yan ni Secretary Lopez kasi ang tagal-tagal, uh, tinabot ng ilang years yan sa medicine, sana hindi na... And I feel the frustration of our colleagues to really focus on agriculture on this matter. So, sana ma na identify na rin lang, sana ma implement agad. So, yun lang po. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Senator Risa, for allowing me to intervene uh, before you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, uh, we recognize Senator Risa. Salamat, Madam Chair. Isang uh, follow up question lang po. Dun sa unang tanong ni Majo kanina. But before that, for the record, Madam Chair, uh, I share the position of the chair against eliminating uh, import tariffs para bigyan ng karapat-dapat na protection yung ating lokal na uh, hog industry. So sa tanong ko, Madam Chair, para kay Sekdar, uh, nahihirapan daw po talagang kumuha ng baboy sa malayong lugar mula Quezon, Halimbawa, at iba pang mga farms na mas malayo pa sa uh, NCR. Ano po ba ang sinasabi sa inyo, Sek, uh, ng mga biyahero at uh, paano nyo po sila, paano matutulungan sila ng uh, DA para i-ease -i yung transport uh, ng pork supplies? Uh, aming uh, ongoing uh, support ay na yung mga nabigay po namin ng mga trucks and other uh, mga equipment sa mga uh, food no, farmers cooperatives and associations ay immobilized na ito para regular yung tracking and shipping at cost. Uh, pwedeng uh, uh, yung regional field office can also handle yung uh, gasoline para mas mabilis pa yung uh, pagdating na mas maraming food supplies dito po sa metro area. Well, salamat uh, Sekdar para dun sa maikling tanong and pinick up ko talaga higit sa lahat yung sinabi niyong at cost. So, maglulog forward po ako kasama ng komite. Uh, I-oversee na talagang kung paano maisasagawa yun to contribute hindi lang sa ease of transport sa ating mga biyahero, pero overall yung uh, access talaga uh, ng ating mga kababayan sa supplies ng pork sa abot kayang halaga na meron din ano, sustainable return on investment sa iba't ibang stakeholders sa hog industry. So, salamat sec at salamat po Madam Chair. We recognize uh, Mr. San Diego. Uh, ma Madam Chairman, uh, this is uh, Chester. Uh, if you allow me, I will just uh, give uh, one correction dun po sa uh, good senator natin na uh, Mig Subiri. If uh, yes. uh, Ubra Joji will allow me, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I just uh, correction lang po uh, dun po sa binanggit ni ano, uh, Senator Subiri. The <clears throat> Bukid Nun and uh, General Santos City, as of this date, are uh, still uh, dark. ASF free. ASF, uh, free pa po. Anyway, si Senator Subiri, kaibigan po natin yan. Uh, he has the passion sa livestock and a graduate of uh, UPLD. So thank you po for that uh, chance. Thank you, okay. uh, Mr. Joji, for allowing oh, me. ASF free pa daw ang Jensen. Okay. Uh, 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 Thank you. Uh, uh, oh. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Senator. Nag-announce ang Malacanang uh, price freeze na yung Metro Manila. Uh, Metro Manila lang. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, uh, ano ang range ng price free? Wala pa nakalagay? I think uh, yung, ano, yung huling sinabi ni Secretary. It's to uh, 310? Uh, 280 to 310. <laughs> Yeah. Ang, ang problema, Madam Chair, hinihihin natin sana kasi yung Jensen is uh, nasa 170. Siguro yung price support dun sa vessel, no? Uh, Yun na lang. O yung mahihirapan na to ano yung price freeze, sabihin natin kay Secretary Dar, tulungan na lang sa transport. Yes, Secretary no? Dar, oo. Okay. Yung mga malalayo, oo. Yeah. Okay. We're asking, sabi ni Secretary Dar, okay daw. 
So, you recognize Mr. San Diego? Okay. Um, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, Madam Che. Ako po ang chairman ng Philippine Egg Board at chairman po din ako ng United Broiler Racers <coughs> Association o UBRA. Uh, na, nagtas po ako ng kamay dahil may katanungan si uh, Senator Nancy Binay tungkol sa broiler. Uh, ang the past several years, uh, Madam Chair, ang uh, poultry and livestock ang tinuturing ng DA na engine of growth uh, sa agri-sector. Pero imbis po na bigyan ng incentive, pinapahirapan kami lumago dahil nag import ng maraming uh, karne na nakakalaban po namin sa merkado. And it discourages us. Uh, nakakalungkot po din na isipin na ang ugat po ng problema natin ngayon sa baboy at sasabihin ko uh, lalaki din ang problema sa manok ay ang importation at ang magiging solusyon po natin ay mas marami pang importation. Uh, yun po ang nakakalungkot. Uh, tungkol po sa estado ng manok ngayon may konting problema na po sa supply at uh, sa tingin po namin lalaki ang problema in this coming months. Sa itlog po naman may problema din pero may problema po ay ang mga uh, layer farmers kasi parami po ang itlog itong taon na ito. Uh, kasi Parang po, hindi naman po affected ang itlog eh. Nakita ko yung mga prices sa, it, sa itlog, hindi naman. Tsaka yung sa chicken po, maliit lang eh. In fact, ang ano, 150 to 160 ba yun? Binasa ko yung mga range eh. So, I think pork ang malaki problema. Opo, opo. Uh, malaki po, uh, hanggang 180 po ang manok at may 200 po sa ilang market na sinangayunan po yun ang monitoring ng DTI. Uh, at nilalagay nila sa manok 160, di ba? Ang price. Opo, po, po. isinali yun. Pero ano, uh, yan po kasi uh, bunga po yan na hindi kami nakonsulta. Kasi yun na mara, ma, mataas na po ang production cost. Para sa kaalaman nyo po, ang presyo po ng sisiw ngayon na dati mga 20 pesos lang, 48 to 50 pesos po ngayon ang isang sisiw. Can you give us, uh, uh, can you give the senators your costings? Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Ma kasi para matulungan namin kayo kasi, you know, uh, talagang pinag-aaralan namin yung local costings tapos yung import para gagawa kami ng paraan na marat, maging competitive kayo kasi that's the best way talaga. Mahirap kasi yung ano, mga kartel-kartel, ang hirap i-control niyan. Eh. Pag, pero pag competitive kayo towards yung mga, ano, mga imported, ba, baliwala sila. Katulad na nangyari sa rice, parang partially, na partially solved because of right policies. So we, we are, I'm, I'm uh, as chairman of the Committee on Agriculture and Food, nag-iisip ako kasi kayo na lang po, natulungan ko na yung sugar, natulungan ko na yung fisheries, natulungan ko na yung rice. Kayo yung natitira eh, yung livestock and chicken, yung chicken and livestock. So talagang I'm due to write a bill on how to help the livestock and chicken sector. And uh, you have to help me kasi yung sa rice, kaya ako po na-write ng maganda yun, may study. May study talaga what's wrong with it. Talagang uh, pinakita na hindi tayo competitive sa Vietnam. So, uh, inilagay ito sa study na it's labor. High cost of labor. So, mechanization yon Tapos, uh, pangit yung seeds. So, better seeds yon So, alam ko na gagawin. Oo, sana meron ding study. Wala pa ako nakikitang study sa livestock and poultry na ano ba ang maitutulong sa kanila para sila ay maging competitive at lumaki yung income nila. So, I hope to be able to do that in the future. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair? Wala, wala. Ay, sige po. Uh, sige. Yeah, sige yes, na, Madam Chair. Sir. Just to reiterate, kasi katulad nung na nabanggit din ni Sir San Diego, in fact, yung sa broiler industry yo, for the past five years, surplus po yung production nyo, tama po ba? Uh, mal hindi na po po surplus pero posible po kasi maging self-sufficient tayo no time po ni uh, Secretary uh, ano ano panahon ni Pinoy uh, na sabi na po namin yan uh, kayang kaya maging self-sufficient kaya lang po ang request namin eh sana po eh tigilan yung importation para maatin namin yung goal namin na yan 
And, and Mr. Sanjego, tama po ba na ang dahilan kung bakit bumagsak yung production natin noong 2020 dahil sa pronouncement ng DA na mag import ng manok? Uh, hindi po lang pronouncement, uh, uh, Madam Senator, kundi talagang ginawa. Uh, actually, sumulat po kami noong May 8 na kay uh, Secretary Dar na uh, kung po pwede, tigilan mo na yung importation kasi yung main market po na importe ng manok ng mga hotel, mga restaurant, nagsara. At yan po ay sinuportahan ni Senator Villar noong uh, May 15 na sumulat din kay Secretary Dar na gawin yun. At uh, uh, nakapag-meeting din kami kay Secretary Dar uh, face-to-face meeting na noong uh, June 15, sinabi namin, pag hindi po itinigil yan, ganito ang mangyayari. Aatras po ang local production. At uh, pagdating ng panahon, masishort po yung broiler. Eh, hindi And po fact, mangyayari yung nire-request namin. Kaya ganyan po mararanasan natin ngayon. And in fact, uh, Mr. Sandiev, kaya nga ho nangyari, pinatay na lang ho yung mga parents. Fuck. Tama yes. po ba yun? Yes, totoo ba So, so saka hindi mo, lang po. Hindi lang po kaming mali, uh, hindi lang po kaming maliliit uh, senator ang tumigil, ang o oh, nagbawas, may tumigil, may nagbawas, pati po yung malalaking kumpanya ng broiler dito sa bansa, nagbawas din po sila ng capacity. Kaya ganyan po yung nararanasan natin ngayon. And sa so, may may kailangan niyo na naman ng panahon para mag-recover ulit. Tama po oh, 'yun. Opo, medyo matagal and, po 'yan. Uh, yung kung panahon patuloy na yan. Yu, and kung patuloy ho yung importation, this will not encourage the industry. Yes. Na mag-alaga ulit. Pa pati po yung ano, pati po yung uh, price freeze. Uh, kung hindi po kami kikita do sa price freeze, eh wala po mag-aalaga. <clears throat> Sa mahal po ng inputs, kabuka na yan, sabi ko, ko nga po, all-time high po ang presyo ng sisiw. Ngayon lang po nangyayari na nag-50 pesos. Indication niya na talagang binawasan po yung mga breeders ng mga kumpanya dito sa Pilipinas. Na nasakta ng gusto nitong mga nakaraan na sobra-sobra po yung in-import na uh, manok. Uh, para sa kaalaman po natin lahat, noong 2019 po, ang na-import nating uh, chicken, 340 million kilos. Isang record po yan. Pero last year, na isang COVID year, kung saan kulang na mababa uh, ang konsumo, ang in-import po natin ay 402 million kilos. Kaya po pinatay talaga at pinahirapan ng gusto ang lokal na industriya. Kasi hindi kung hindi, hindi, hindi ko po naman po, maintindihan bakit yung mga nagbibigay ng importation, eh, hindi man lang uh, mag-strategy. Katulad nun sa rice, kung kailan harvest season, i-import, sasabayan yung ano, digalit-tagalit yung mga farmer. Ibig sabihin, common sense naman yun. Ah. <laughs> hindi mo sinasabay sa local production yung importation, hindi ba? Eh, siguro, malakas sa kanila yung mga importer, kaya palaging ganyan. Eh, kaya nga, gusto ko, Uh, gumaling kayo para na sa ganun kahit mag-import sila eh, papatayin natin yung imported so, yun ang, <laughs> eh, kasi yung, dapat yung permanent solution eh. like for example sa rice talagang mahina tayo relative to Vietnam so kung maging maggumaling ang rice farmer ang problema lang na Manila eh, high cost of labor which will be solved by mechanization and better seeds which we can distribute and field rice will will teach them how to produce inbred seeds, a permanent solution yan. Hindi na tayo, miski mag-import sa Vietnam, talo natin. Oo, kasi they have to pay for duty and they have to pay for for transportation. So, iiben na tayo. Siguro in two years, iiben na tayo na we can compete. Kasi palaging ganyan. And then I make the the rice farmer na maliliit kung uh, diretso na sila sa retailer uh, kasi bibigyan na sila ng dryer at saka milling machine meron naman maliliit na dryer at milling machine na ibibigay sa lahat ng uh, cooperative yung ganun bang solution para matigil na yung palagi na lang taon-taon same problem and taon-taon na uh, hindi na so solve ang problem uh, kasi ako, galing ako from the private sector, kaya sa amin, lahat is competitiveness. We have to compete in the marketplace. Kaya ako, gusto ko, yung mga farmer natin can really compete because that is the permanent solution to the problem. Kasi hindi mo naman mapigil yung mga government agency na magbigay na import permit. Eh. <laughs> Talagang practice nila yan. Ayaw sila tumigil. Siguro doon sila nagkakapera kaya ayaw nila tumigil mag na magbigay ng import permit. So, I, 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 
ako po ay nakikiramay sa inyo sa mga problema nyo. I just want to be able to file a bill na permanent solution to our problem. We make our farmers competitive para kahit sila mag-import, kaya natin labanan. Yun lang ang habol natin talaga. That's the only permanent solution. Hearing ba tayo ng hearing na pagagalitan natin yung mga nag-issue ng import permit na yan? Sawang sawa na ako nang kapapagalit din sa mga nag-i-issue na import permit. Sinabi ko nga doon sa nag-i-issue sa rice, tigilan mo na pag-issue pag harvest season. Huwag mo sabayan yung mga farmer at bunga nga ng bunga nga yung mga farmer sa amin na ang bababa daw ng presyo ng rice. When the solution is just not to import during harvest season, 'di ba? Para hindi hindi walang competition yung local farmers, 'di ba? Di ba yun ang solution? So, I hope the hog industry and the chicken industry can give me a study which can be the basis for me to draft a law like our Madam chairperson. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pero sa tingin ko, pagdating dun sa manok, it was self-inflicted eh. Tama po ba, Mr. San Diego? Because kung hindi tayo nag-import na, import na sobra, na sobra pa, Eh, hindi nga mapigil eh. eh. Hindi Ang mapigil eh. Kahit sabihin mo na huwag mag-import, ayaw tumigil. Ayaw tumigil. Oh. So, babantayan mo nang babantayan. Eh, buti ko ako, magbabantay ako. Eh, paano sa future? Kailangan ang solution permanent. Hindi ako na lang ang magagalit na magagalit. Tapos eh, palagi nila ako sinisirang kasi palagi ako nagagalit sa kanila. <laughs> Yes, Madam, Madam Chair, Chair, siguro yun yung magandang pag-aralan. Baka yun ang kailangan natin i-legislate na tigi, kung paano sila pipigyan mag-import. Oh, yun nga. Kaya nga. That's why Sarah I want Mar a study. Sarah yes. Sarah 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 yung mga, and yung mga Chair. producers. Yes. Yes. Any one minute. Because I think yung mga producers ho natin, lalong-lalong na dun sa manok, okay naman sila eh. Kasi mm. naman, nung, nung bumuhos itong imported chicken, eh, Doon na, doon na sila uh, parang naapektuhan, malaking naapektuhan. And Alam mo, hindi ito. mo naman mapipigil ang importation, kailangan lang may tariff, di ba? Kasi bawal ngayon yung hindi maganda na pagbabawal mo importation. Ang, ang dapat, yung tariff malaki para it's not worthwhile for them to import, di ba? Kasi kung malaki ang tariff, hindi... Mas mura ang lokal, di kayo bibilhin, di ba? Kaya, kaya ako, I don't agree na dapat magtanggalin ang tarif because that is the prote protection of the locals, di ba? Madam, Madam Chair, Pero, Pero, Madam, Chair. Just, Madam Chair, just said, I need just for submission, kadag, uh, additional submission lang po dun sa mga hog growers saka dun sa mga nag-aalaga. Chicken. Ng Kasi alam naman po natin na ang kailangan ngayon is how to help them repopulate. Yes. yes. So maganda kong malaman, ano yung nakikita nilang programa ng yeah, Department yeah. of Agri Agriculture kung meron man Wala. na talaga nakakatulong sa kanila. Oo. Oh. At so, doon, please at submit. At nakikita nila na programa na dapat gawing i-adopt ng Department of Agriculture. Ilang po. Yeah, I'm asking the chicken sector and the hog sector or to submit to me. So I will read and I will study what can be done. Maybe in terms of legislation as much as possible kasi doon lang kami. And in terms of oversight, kung ano babantayan namin sa oversight function namin sa livestock and, and poultry. Yes, ato, Senator Aimee? Yes, kaya nga po, dahil nga sa nangyari sa poultry, medyo natutrauma na rin yung sa pork importation. Kasi unang-una, nakakatakot. Imagine yung Department of Agriculture na tagapagtanggol dapat ng magsasaka, pangungunahan na naman ang importation. Ano ba naman? Baliktad na yata mundo. Pagkatapos, sasabihin na hindi naman daw walang taripa kasi 5%. Ano ba yung 5%? Sa taas ng presyo. Pero debong lang yun, ha? hindi sila allow Uh, gano'n ng ano ng ano yung mga port talaga hindi allowed yon inano sa ano at at, baka itaas at the end of 2022 to 10% nako naman lokohan na yan pagkatapos higit sa lahat ang balibalita sa industriya eh meron na daw mga importation license na ibinigay sa mga usual suspects na paborito kaya 
talagang umaalingaw mo yung mga chismis na ganyan kasi nagiging vicious cycle talaga magdedeklara ng shortage pagkatapos mag import ng katakot-takot. Parang gawain na yun eh. Can we never convert this to a virtuous circle exactly as our chairwoman says and make our farmers competitive? Yun lang po. Oh. So siguro yan na ang ating message kay Secretary Dar. Hindi pwede yung importation na walang tariff. <laughs> Lakayan mo tariff to protect the local. Hindi, hindi pwede yun. Alam mo, alam mo, sa aming uh, ano, di ba, para naisip mo, gumagawa ng ganiting situation para maka-import. Kasi gustong gusto mong i-issue ng importation. Ano ba to ginawa? Kasi kung titingnan mo, hindi naman ganito no October, November, biglang ngayon lang January, biglang tumaas ang presyo. Para hindi naman ganito last year eh. O ngayon lang January nag-spike. Ano ginawa yun ng trader para maka-import sila? Eh dapat pagdudahan yun eh. Oo, oh, tampo niyo, Chairwoman, 'di ba? Dinanas na po natin 'to. Nagbigay maka-announce ng shortage sa bawang. Ginawa na rin 'yan sa sibuyas. Ginawa na rin 'yan sa rice. Kaya ay pagkumanhin naman na po niyo na talagang paranoid na paranoid na kami. Nung in-announce na may shortage na naman sa baboy, eto na naman. Mag-i-import na naman ng katakot-takot. Uh, totoo yun. Totoo yun. Secretary Dar, magsalita ka. Sus Maria Osir. Yes, ma'am. Can, can I uh, have the floor, Madam Chair? Yes. Alam mo, kasi tinitingnan ko yung ano ng, ng prices. Parang ngayon lang biglang-biglang tumaas, di ba? Meron bang gumawa niya para maka-import? Hindi po. That's not related to that. Please. Kasi ang answer mo kasi, importation. Huwag importation ang answer, di ba? We are always guided by uh, relevant... Uh, facts and figures. So po, sa tarif na, uh, okay, let me start by saying, tama po yung direction po ninyo, uh, let's make the commodity industries very competitive. Yun palagi ang gusto natin mangyari. Now, between that, from now up until we are able to compete, then you have to balance all things. Hindi naman Pero pwede they... lahat ay hindi sila makakakosurvive uh, habang sila ay nagiging competitive kung papatayin natin sila. Like a rice farmer, we we did sub, magsasubsidy tayo, magtuturo tayo habang uh, i, i, uh, ano, by, by exacting tariff. At yung tariff na yon ang gagamitin natin para gastahin na tulungan sila. Parang gano'n yun. I-tariff mo yung imported, tapos yung tariff na yon yun ang pang-subsidize mo sa mga local para after a while magiging competitive na sila. Diba? So, tariff is very necessary. Hindi naman sila nagagalit sa importation. but lagyan mo ng tariff? Uh, Lagyan mo ng tariff. Tapos yung debo na yun, alam ko sa food processor lang yun eh. Hindi naman yun para sa lahat ng import eh. Para lang doon sa nagawa ng mga, ano, ng mga delata. Eh, misang kasi sila, sila, sila rin yung nag-i-smuggle nag, uh, o nag-i-import tapos dinideclare nila sa 5%. At, ah, alam mo, alam naman natin lahat yan. Hindi na lang tayo nagsasalita kasi nakakahiya. We are talking about, uh, about graph and corruption in public. Ako kasi nahihiya akong pag-usapan yung graph and corruption in public. But hindi naman lahat tayo alam natin yan eh. Yung mga private sector, alam yan kami mga senador, alam namin yan. Ikaw, alam mo yan eh. Oo. Na gimmick yan eh. <laughs> Ayoko na lang magsalita kaya ako yun ang ano ko na magpasa na lang ng batas para once and for all eh. Eh, tapusin na itong problema na to kasi kung magpag-uusapan natin ng graph and corruption, napapa, napipigil ba yung graph and corruption? <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, eh, pagpatuloy ko lang kung pwede po. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Bilay, Senator uh, IMB, ang uh, perfect model po sa self-sufficiency dito sa atin ay yung itlog. Mm -hmm. uh, kasi po, kaya lang ngayon pa na itong taon na ito nasa obrahan, kasi po yung mga nalugi sa broiler, nalugi sa baboy, lumipas sa itlog. Kasi ang katwiran po nila, wala kasing importation na itlog. 
Kaya may laban sila. Mababasag eh, mababasag. <laughs> Hindi, tsaka kaya may laban sila, kaya sila mag-produce. Kaya, eh, lang, kaya dahil sabihin lang po, sa mga tao, kaya kumain sila ng baboy, kumain na lang sila na itlog. Iba. <laughs> <laughs> Para hindi na okay. lang magka-shortage ng baboy, di ba? Pero, ma- pero, pero madam siya, madam siya, mag-import ng itlog. <laughs> Pababasa. Eh, pero ma- Madam Chair, dahil hindi din kami nakonsulta, ang SRP na itlog na 650 ay eh, mataas. Kasi po ngayon mababa ng fresh na itlog dahil ang daming ahaw ng puda. Ang daming na. Totoo. Eh, ang, yun, yun po ay binubunga na hindi nagkukonsulta. Yun sa oh. broiler po, masyado mababa yung kanilang pinepeg na SRP sa itlog. Eh, mab- hindi kayo mag-member din sa kanilang, meron silang ano, private sector ah, uh, government na ano na committee di ba ano ba yung secretary dar ano tawag mo doon agricultural uh, fisheries and ano yung inyong combination ng private sector and ano government ano po yon no, mayroon man Philippine uh, Council on Agriculture and Fisheries ayun oh no? dapat mag-member kayo no para palagi kayo nakokonsulta member po kami ma'am pero hindi din kami nakokonsulta member po kami no bakit hindi tinatawag lahat para nakikita niyo yung opinion ng private sector? Hindi nga ho namin alam. Nagugulat na lang kami pagka nagbigay ng NDA ng SRP. Dahil nagtatunong kami, nakonsulta ba kayo? Nakonsulta kayo? Wala po nakonsulta sa amin. Kahit tanong niyo sila, uh, Congressman Nicky Briones, sila sendo. Sumulat po Basta kayo po sa Secretary Dar, tapos sumulat kayo sa akin, tapos ako ang magpo-forward kay Secretary Dar ko itinatago ng kanyang sekretarya yung mga letter nyo. Bakit? Hindi ba? Oo. Bakit hindi makakarating? Kung talaga may sulat, baka may, sinabi doon sa sekretarya, huwag mo ibibigay itong mga letter na to kay Secretary Dar. Di ba? Ah, uh, nagpetition oh, pala yung DA, nagpetition ng DA to lower the tariff of rice, yung outside. Ah, hindi, uh, hindi, over my dead body. And, uh, <laughs> Wala uh, namang rice shortage eh. Talagang uh, pinag-i-import naman sila. I mean, saka, saka yung ba pinag-iinitan pa ang rice? Ang rice nga ang saving grace natin ngayon eh. Di ba ang natin, ano? Wag na yung rice, wag nang paki-alaman yung rice. Pati yung pati yung pork and chicken from 30%, ginagawa nila 5%, tsaka yung 40% sa 15%. Uh, petition by ano, uh, Agricultural Secretary William Dart. Oo. Ano ba naman yung 5%? Parang lokohan hanggang end of 2022, mamamatay naman po kami. Alam mo, Secretary Dart, Tingin ko, in unison, ang Senate, ayaw nila yung pagbaba ng tariff na yan. I mean, that's the only protection of the local farmers from imported. Eh, hirap na hirap na nga sila, papatayin mo pa sila, pabababain mo ang tariff. Eh, gumawa kayo ng ibang paraan para hindi mag-inflation. Mayroon lang naman January yan, tinitingnan ko yung November, ano, hindi naman eh. O bakit biglang January? What's so important about January na biglang nagmahal? E eh, wala naman nangyari ngayon January. In fact, kung magmamahal, dapat December kasi Pasko maraming bumibili ng pagkain. E eh, ngayon January, parang bumalik na sa normal ang pagbili, like November eh. O oh, ba't magmamahal? Di mo na nipulate yan. Madam, taposin ko na lang. Uh, total okay. na sa tarif. Yung oh. ano, yung kamukhaan nito, yung pinag-uusapan sa MAVI, minimum access volume, mas mababa po yan kesa dun sa out quota. Yeah. Uh, sa, yeah. po, eh, pero ang mga consumers po, walang pakinabang dyan at nawawalan po ang gobyerno ng, uh, ng taripa, ng excess pa, yung tax Except collection. Allowed silang okay. mag-import pero may tarif. Yun ang pero, ano. Pero ang ibig ko sabihin, yung MAV po, yung, yung, yung nag import po sa MAV, yung binebenta po naman nila sa merkado, hindi naman mas mababa, eh, pareho din eh. Oh, May kita lang po na extra yung nag-i-import, true map. Baka so, nag-lobby. Na gobyerno, at hindi rin nagkikinabong yung consumer. So, Mr. San Diego, hindi kayo siguro nag-lobby. <laughs> hindi po. <laughs> mahirap po eh. Mahirap po yung lobby sa ganyan. Pero so, lang lang pa yung mab eh. Mag-lobby. Pagkatapos oh. <laughs> may outflow pa. Pag- okay. Hindi. Eh, Kaya hindi, hindi baka ganito tayo po. patayin na ni Secretary Dar. Oh. Hindi, ganito po. Kaya hindi na po kailangan. 
yung yung katwiran po kasi ng DA na hindi papayagan WTO na itigil muna importation. Ang commitment oh, okay po lang. Sa, ang commitment po lang natin sa WTO yung MAB. Oh. Ay, ma, ang MAB volume po ng chicken 24 million lang. Eh iniimport oh. natin last year 402 million. Kaya nga. Oh. Dapat malaki ang tariff, 'di ba? Tapos lalakihan po natin ang MAB, eh di ang makikinabang po lang yung MAB holder, hindi naman po magbe-benefit ng consumer. Di na, di na. Tsaka problema din yan, pag import na yan, mag-underpriced, di maliit din ang <laughs> another problem pa yung bukod dun sa mababa na tariff. Oo. Oh. Oh. Mawawala pa po ang gobyerno. Ayan na po. Anyway, <laughs> uh, may, we, may we recognize na Secretary Ordon, ay, Secretary, Mr. Ordonez, dating Yusek Ordonez. Sige. Yusek Ordonez, you're mute. You're mute. Yusek oh, Ordonez. Ako ba ako si Ernie? Ako ho yata. Abong insyon nga pala. Yeah, yeah. Sige. Ma'am, Ma Ma magandang tanghali po. Una, nagpapasalamat kami doon sa tulong nyo last year. Kanya lang, hindi napakinggan ni Secretary Dao. Una ho, yung comment lang ho doon sa first border, baka ho, mabudgetan nyo pa. Mali ho yung De. design ng, ng uh, Department of Agriculture na gagawin lima po yung facilities all over the country. Oh. Eh, parang ginawa ho nyo yung lima yung pwedeng pasokan ng sakit. Mm. Ito, sa Indonesia ho, ang pagkaunawa namin, sa Indonesia, isa lang ho, ang first border facility, isang port lang, eh mas malaki. Kasi ako. dito sa atin, ano, ang island natin, grabe. Siguro at most, dapat may Visayas, may Mindanao, may Luzon. Kasi grabe ang ating ano eh. Kasi pag, pag binaba mo doon, tapos dito mo dinala, ang mahal-mahal. Kasi dito, ang problem ng transport, mas mura pa daw yung taga Mindanao dalhin sa Japan kesa dalhin sa Maynila yung ano. <laughs> Hindi ko na ako maintindihan yun. Ewan ko kung cabotage lo yung mali, di ba? Pero sabi nila mas mura pa daw sa mga taga Mindanao dalhin sa Japan kesa dalhin sa Manila. Oh. Then there's something wrong, di ba? May cartel din sa shipping, di ba? Oh, that's another problem. So kung ililimit mo naman sa isa, paano dadalhin sa Mindanao at sa Visayas? O oh, yung dadaan dito. So siguro minimum yun, tatlo. Isang Visayas, isang Mindanao, isang Luzon. So magbantay doon sa Bisaya, yung mga taga-Bisaya, yung magbantay sa Mindanao, mga taga-Mindanao, at kayong taga-Luzon, dito kayo magbantay sa Luzon. Diba kasi grabe rin yung ating transportation cost dito sa Pilipinas. Yan ang complain nila uh, it's it's cheaper to bring the products to Japan than to bring the products from Mindanao to Manila. Paano naman nangyari yun? Uh, diba? I give it to your good judgment, ma'am. Kanya lang, ang point naman ho ng first border ay quarantine. Kung uh, bibigyan naman ho ng tao na tama, baka po pwede yung tatlo. Pero yung lima, malabo ho yun. O, di so, tatlo. So, so, minimum tatlo. Wala naman silang pere. Kami naman maglalagay sa budget eh. Nilista ko na para make sure na nasa budget yung next year. Ma'am, tapos ma'am, kung po pwede, ponduhan nyo rin yung, ano, yung implementation ng sections 38 to 45 ng ACMA. Ano yun? National Information Network, yung data system. Kasi, no, kasi ma'am, pumasok po tayo sa WTO free trade. Ang pag ang free trade doon nag-work ma'am kung may data, may information. Eh ang nangyayari ho ngayon, bulag ho ang lahat. Importer ka man, producer ka man, nagkakagulat ang ma'am eh. Kung po pwede ho, mga pondohan na ho yung national information. Sino ba gagawa noon? PA ma'am, 23 years na yung batas na yun ma'am, hindi pa nila ini-implement. Ano title noon? Yung APMA. APMA. Agriculture Fisher APMA, ma'am. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. Ano Fisher yung APMA? Organization APMA. Okay, APMA. Kasi nasa design po yan ng entry natin ng sa WTO eh. Kung free trade tayo, kailangan may data and information network tayo. Otherwise, ma'am, sobra-sobra yung magiging decision sa production, sa importation. Magkakagulatan yan, ma'am. Yun naman ang nangyayari, ma'am. Kaya mayat maya may oversupply or uh, undersupply. Tapos ma'am, kung po pwede, yung MAB ma'am, kasi lalo na sa chicken ma'am, kasi yung sa original commitment natin sa WTO, nag-equal na po yung inside and outside ma'am. 
in short, wala na hong mob sa chicken. Ay. Ipinipilit na lang ho ng DA na may mob para ho maiwasan yung special safeguards duty. Kung po pwede ho, i-abolish na. Actually, kahit ho sa baboy, pwede na rin i-abolish yan kasi yung hong sa baboy, ang pumasok last year is 256 million kilos. Yung sa manok, 402 million kilos. Yan ho kasi yung minimum access volume. Uh, yan ho ay protection para sa mga exporting countries para mm -hmm. tiyak na may i-import. Eh, sobra-sobra naman po ang ating ini-import. Hindi na ho kailangan yan. Mm. Tapos, so, itong proposal po ng DA na expand yung minimum access volume ng uh, port, eh, kinakabahang po kami dyan dahil mm. uh, ang ulat po sa amin, meron silang uh, nag-resign yung dating head ng minimum access volume committee. Ang ipinalik po nila ay si Mr. Jane Bakayo. Si Mr. Jane Bakayo, ma'am, abogado po yan at veterinarian. Eh... Wala pong kumpiyansa ang sektor dyan. Tinanggal po yan ni Secretary Alcala noon because of the advocacy of the sector of the poultry and livestock. Mm. Eh, ang sama po ng itsura tuloy ni Secretary Dar na parang, parang bakit naglagay all of us din itong tao na ito na hindi pinagkakatiwalaan ng sektor at inalagay po sa expansion ng sa map na ini-expand nila. Eh, alam nyo naman po yan, kota ho yan. Uh, kahit sinong ekonomista magsasabi naman na ang kota ay eh, very graph-ridden ho yan, susceptible to graph. Take piso na lang ho, di 162 million. Sa 10 piso ho, di 1.6 billion. Kanya hindi ho tama yung expansion ng MAB. Eh. Tama po yung eh, instinct po dyan ng uh, mga senator. May nabasa ako sa newspaper, chismis. Hindi ko naman malaman kung sino sinasabi nila. Yung ba daw natanggal ng previous secretary, ibinalik ni Secretary Dar, eh yun natanggal dahil sa graft and corruption. Na, Nakaano yun eh. Kaya nga tinatanong ko yung, assist, yung akin chief of staff, sino ba tong mga ito na ibinalik? Na, na charge ng grab and corruption sa previous administration na ibinalik mo daw, Secretary Dar. Kasi hindi ko naman alam yung mga natanggal ng previous ano, kasi nasa mga baba. So, nakalagay po yun, uh, cheese mission dun sa ke, yung mga na, may mga nag, uh, ano, na Mga, marami daw tinanggal nung previous admis, ng previous secretary na binalik mo daw ngayon. Eh, kaya yun natanggal because of graft and corruption. Oo, so, hindi ko lang kilala ko sino yun pero naka-chismis dun sa ano. Nabasa ko lang. Can I give you the information, madam? Yes, yes. Okay. Alam po ninyo, hindi po ang secretary ng Department of Agriculture ang na appointing power ang presidential appointee po so pag dumating eh, pero yung pag mong payagan na gumawa sila ng mga ruling na hindi maganda para sa ating industry okay lang silang ma appoint kung gusto ng presidente pero huwag ka pumayag na magruruling sila ng ganyan kasi alam mo naman niya mga ganyan yan ang pinanggagalingan talaga ng graft and corruption common sense na pa yun eh o Kahit na presidente nag-appoint, pigilin mo sila. Tapos isumbong mo sa presidente. Oh, oh. Nakasulat eh, nakakahiya eh. Tinatanong ko nga sa chief of staff ko, sino ba itong mga sinasabing tinanggal for graft and corruption? Ibinalik na naman. <laughs> pagod na pagod na rin ako. Mahirap magbantay din sa agriculture. Akala nyo ba? Kaya napansin nyo pag sumusulat ako ng batas, Nakalagay kung kani sino mag-i-implement, magkano i-implement para pag nagkaroon ng kalokohan, alam ko kung sino hahanapin. Kasi pag mga yusek-yusek, di mo malaman kung sino nag-implement. O ito, may agency eh. Sabi ko, pag kayo eh nagloko, ididimanda ko kayo. Alam na alam ko kung sino mag-i-implement. Katulad nun sa Coco Levy, bakit daw ang daming agency? Mabuti nga yung maraming agency kasi hindi lahat na agency matino. E di at least kung sampung agency may nag-perform na lima, eh malaking bagay sa coconut industry kaysa ibigay mo sa isang agency na walang pinerform, patay ang coconut industry, di ba? O ibigay mo ang, uh, ibigay mo ang, ano, ano tawag doon? Ibigay mo yung uh, planting sa PCA. O, ibigay mo yung processing sa Filmet. 
O ibigay mo yung intercropping sa high value crop. Ibigay mo yung scholarship sa CHED. Ibigay mo yung vocational school sa TESDA. O di sampu sila. Ibigay mo yung uh, uh, ano tawag dito? Infrastructure sa DPWH. Ibigay mo yung ba yung yung loan sa banko. O di kung merong mapalpak na lima, may lima pang nag-perform. Di merong nangyari. Kasi <laughs> ang hirap nung sa iisa mong agency ibibigay. Tapos eh, napalpak. Wala nang nangyari. O. Oh, di at saka kilala mo kung sino mag implement Kaya pag hindi na-implement, may sisisihin ka. Hindi yung ibigay mo sa isang department na hindi mo malam kung sino nag-implement sa department, nagtatago. Oh. Alam nyo, mahirap talagang mag-oversight din. Mahirap. Kaya ako, sinasabi ko sa, sa sila may problema ngayon. This is the first time na nagka-problema talaga ang livestock and poultry. Kasi ang livestock and poultry, private sector led yan. Kaya ako, hindi ako worried dyan kasi ang private sector, alam nila, uh, alam nila mag-manage ng business. Alam nila, they can take care of themselves except nagka-ASF. Yun ang naging problema, yung ASF, hindi ma-solve. So ngayon, bigla akong naisip, talaga nasa ano ko yan, nagagawa ako ng batas to benefit the livestock and poultry. Eh, inihuli ko kasi parang sila ang walang masyadong problema. Ngayon sila na ngayon ang malaki problema. So hinihiling ko sa industry ng livestock and poultry, magbigay kayo sa akin ng mga study, ng mga opinion, para babasahin ko, para makita ko kung ano gagawin natin para makagawa ko ng batas na matulungan kayo. Oo, kasi uh, baka sakali, ba diba? That uh, papwersa ang DA na bigyan kayo ng ganitong programa every year hanggang makarecover kayo. Kasi pag nasa batas, they have to implement it. Kasi pag budget lang, taon-taon nagbabago yung budget. Pero pag nasa batas, na inilagay doon na taon-taon bibigyan kayo ng ganito, ng ganito, they have to follow it because it is a provision of the law. Oo. So, yun siguro pwede natin gawin para masolve natin towards the long run ang problema ng livestock and poultry. Yes, uh, Senator Kiko. Yes, just very quickly dun sa sinasabi ni Attorney Inchong. Kung maaari lang, uh, meron bang position paper ang inyong uh, uh, organization tungkol nga dun sa MAV at yung uh, Mr. Attorney Bakayo? Kung pwede, isumiti sa atin. Para mapusisi din natin. Kasi ng... ngayon lang po, ilang, ilang araw po lang namin nalaman pa eh, na nag-resign po yung dating tinalaga, tapos nilagay po yung Mr. Bakayo. Okay. Eh, nung malaman ho namin, gulat na gulat kami, at kinakabahan po kami, kasi kota ho yan eh. Kota oh. po yung mabig. Kaya nga ho, gusto namin eh, abolish na lang po yan eh. Kaya nga, mag-position right, paper uh, na lang tayo. Kasi, oh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, if you can Pag submit yung it, po, po, pwede po, uh, sasama ko rin ito sa position paper. Uh, kasi nung hindi tayo pinagbigyan ni Secretary Dar nung last year itong sa suspension ng importation, nang sinasabi niya, wala siyang clear authority to suspend. Uh, baka ho po pwede maglagay ho ng maliwanag na batas giving clear authority to the Secretary of Agriculture pag may oversupply which threatens the, the long-term uh, stability of a particular industry lalo na yung may mga breeder operations clear yung authority niya to suspend yung uh, importation kasi halimbawa ho So kaya yung, nga po ang sinasabi yung, namin sa inyo Sinasabi po namin sa inyo, huwag niyo sabihin, put it in writing. Kasi pagkatapos ng hearing natin to, pag hindi yes, niyo nilagay in writing, makakalimutan na yan, di ba? Pero if you put it in writing, yes, pagsasamasamahin namin, and maybe we can study a way by which to correct this many things, di ba? Pag-aaralan namin. So, lahat ng stand niyo, okay, ilagay niyo in writing. Okay, so, kasi ang hirap maalaala yes, lahat ang sinabi nyo. Oh, sige. So there is another, we will hear from you, Mr. Ordonez. Uh, Ordonez, yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ours is already in writing. It was given yesterday. It is the result of an emergency meeting in the face of the agriculture. Wala pa ka sa amin yun. Hindi ko natanggap yun. Yes, but I would like to see the two points very related to this. The first point, is garbage in, garbage out. 
you're correct in asking for the methodology, but if garbage is coming in, the, the outcome is garbage out. Let me inform you that the price coordinating council, where I'm a member, and which I used to co-chair, it was stated clearly that the information being gotten by agriculture was wrong. And therefore, I'm informed. Which you, one? You know, they said at the time that the, uh, the, the, the farm gate coming in was about 190, no? Mm. Okay. It, it is said today that it is now 130 to 185. But, you know, you've got to understand, you tell Metro Manila, you don't talk of price outside. And the, the farm gate given, recorded in price Garden Council and studied by us, and we've been at it since 2003, is that it is right now 250 at the farm gate. It doesn't mean we have to follow that, but you've got to understand that. Therefore, I'm informing you right now that the, the new price was done again without consultation. I mean, when you said it today, you saw the leaders, namely Mr. Chen, Mr. Briones. Pero nagtataka lang ako dyan sa prices na yan. Noong December, November, hindi ganyan yan. Ngayon lang January yan. What's wrong with January na biglang nag-spike? Well, it is of course profiteering. In other words, 400 is ridiculous. And the highest is... Yeah. It should go down. The minimum they said is 330, no? But I'm just telling you that if the people in this hearing who are the leaders kept on saying no to the price they heard, the new price is also wrong. <laughs> the, the, the new price is 28310 is still wrong. So what am I saying? The first point of our position is we must do private sector consultation. It was done, done with eggs. It was done not with chicken. It's not done with the tariff reduction just proposed. It was not done with the mob. It was not done, all right? It was not done. Therefore, we do it. Okay, in fairness to Secretary Dar, maybe his bureaucracy is not serving him well, but they must have this private sector consultation because I'm informing you that that new price was also done without consultation. It is still wrong. Okay, okay. And, and so please send us your study. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. The second point, it's already published in court last week. That's a minimum price. All right. The second point is this the tariffs coming down. <laughs> what is this? In addition to everyone talking what, what, uh, what they're talking about. I like to say this, no? That tariffs are supposed to protect, as you said. What they're doing now, they're bringing down the tariffs. Fine. If bringing down the tariffs will allow people to come in. But they're coming in at, the, at those tariffs already cheaper than our product. Why must you bring it down further? You bring it down further, and what you do is you punish those already surviving. And with doing that, and it counts in many forms. First, tariff reduction. Second, Mob expansion. Third, the the difference in the tariffs coming down. It is ridiculous. In other words, let us leave them alone. Let us not punish them so much. As you know, we the Alianza are really quite upset that the government has neglected us so many years. Now that we're in trouble, you can leave us alone, but you can harm us more. You're harming us more. If the government brings down the tariffs for importers who can make money, giving them more money. And as Mr. Santiago said, it does not translate anyway to the consumers. This is a double hit. So two points. The first point is that we must have private seller consultation. To go to this new price was done again without private seller consultation. So you see the people here saying, oh my God, they changed it, Malipa. They didn't talk to us. And that happens everywhere. Okay. International Trade Committee has not met the whole year. Okay. We used to meet four times a year. They didn't even meet once. All right. And now they're doing this and they didn't even talk. Talk to us again. So first one, private several consultation. If you want oversight, you got too many things to do. We recommend that you do oversight on changes on international trade, such as the setting of prices, the tariff reduction, and all that. Because if you did oversight, you would ensure that before this came in, the law is followed. What's the law? The law is what you talked about today. There has to be private several consultation. It was not done. Not on tariffs, not expansion of power not on the actual price, none. So if you want to do oversight, so many things do, look at this and attend the hearings. They used to do that, right? Number two, that price representation, number two, that tariffs are going the wrong way. <laughs> They're going the wrong way. Why don't you just leave us alone? We're already having trouble. Other countries subsidize. We don't, okay? So we're getting it, all right? Okay. But they're coming in at profit. They're not being stopped. What you want to do is bring it lower to get even more people to come and kill us some more. Uh, this is totally ridiculous. So the, the bottom line is only two things, no? private sector consultation on everything and oversight that it's not happening. In fairness, Secretary Dark, his people maybe are not telling him like those prices. 
there is someone is official who said that actually 200 pesos is wrong all right maybe i said why don't you tell secretary Dari yourself why don't you tell us it was in the price coordinated council it's on record but in fairness to the senators i think we are one in saying that we are not in favor of tariff reduction and mob expansion i mean pagbasa ko pa lang alam ko na and then that's the press release of other senators so you can ano na kami sa senado hindi kami uh, payag dun sa tariff reduction and mob expansion i-allow nila yung mag-import but with tariff ko para may laban naman yung ating local producer yun yun lang ang uh, ano hindi kami guilty niyan yeah, but oversight, you can insist that the private yeah, yeah. should be done. Uh, if they will listen to us, my okay. God. And Secretary Dari is, uh, you know, influenced by his people. Maybe his people are not serving him well, okay? So I'm saying that. And fine, just, just for you to know, I was, of course, the Secretary and Under Secretary. I know international trade. Madam Chair, I'd like to let you know, I won, I won cement safeguards. They're very rich, all right? And I won it. I was President of ASEAN and Philippines. I left them, I came here, I found that in broiler, using the same laws, there is import spread. There's damage in your law, you can do it. They've not done it. That's what I mean, oversight should come in. They're doing it, they gotta go faster. We can do the current laws. Number two, this is very dramatic, you should take this out. If a chicken leg is 100 pesos, okay, and a chicken thigh is 200 pesos, and you have a buck, which is maybe 20 pesos, it's 220, correct? Okay. Maybe you cut it, that costs 60 pesos. Okay, so less than 220, maybe 160. Do you know that they're selling the leg and the tie and the back cheaper than just the leg and cheaper than just the tie? That is definitely, definitely anti-dumping. Okay, and we've not done anything. In other words, Madam Chair, uh, we must talk to private sector, okay? International trade, we have the best guys there. We have not even met once. I've been asking for this. We have, we got a meet, right? And I want to favor what Mr. Dar said. Let us follow what he said. It's not just being done, Mr. Dar. So, Mr. Dar, uh, I think you'll support us. This is, he did us the last time. Let's do it. So, Madam Chair, okay. that is our unanimous. Okay. So, you just uh, send us your position paper. And the last to be recognized is James Chan from the Meat Importation Importer Association. But, Madam Chair, just before, yes. just very quickly, yeah? just very quickly. Yeah, yeah, Kiko. Senator Kiko. Just a point of information, yung binanggit na Attorney Jane Bakayo, chinek po natin, eh siya po ay uh, sinibak nung 2012 dahil sa allegations of meat smuggling bilang uh, head ng NMIS. Uh -huh. So ngayon siya ay in charge ng ASEP Fund Management Program at concurrent na BAB uh, committee. So, uh, baka dapat uh, malaman natin kay Secretary, ano ho ba ang punod dulo nito at uh, yung dating sinibak dahil sa allegations of meat smuggling. Pinapoint daw ng, pinapoint ba Secretary ni President, hindi ikaw? Mr. Secretary. Uh, oh, I see President lang. Uh, director Pataas. So maybe you can inform the president. Baka dapat, uh, Secretary, ipaabot natin kay Pangulo na ito nga ang track record nito at uh, nag-aalma ang sektor. Ang sektor pala na umalman ay ang uh, sektor ng hugs uh, chicken dahil nga sa smuggling. So ngayon, siya ngayon ang in charge dyan sa MAB. Eh, ano ho mangyayari dyan? Baka naman ho tuloy-tuloy Eh, hindi natin alam, no? you are presumed innocent, pero wala na bang ibang pwedeng i-appoint dyan at yung, dati, yung mga nasasangkot sa ganitong klaseng uh, mga kontrobersiya ang, ang uh, pinapasok, lalo na ngayon, uh, naghihirap ang industriya. January at 2021 ito, taya, kaya nabigla nga, according to Attorney Insyong, nabigla nga sila. So maybe this can be related to the, to the tumalakan yan, uh, ang concern nito. Okay, so we recognize James Chan from the Meat Importer Association. Yes, uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, distinguished senators and cabinet secretaries. Thank you for uh, having me. I'd just like to make a few points. Uh, first point is that uh, the import volume of pork and poultry versus local production is still very low compared uh, comparatively 
because uh, this will be less than 20% of local production. That's the first point I want to say. The second point is that the MAB system was put in effect since 1996, and the licensees have been uh, working in that system for uh, like 20 something years. So uh, these are not uh, new faces, these are mainly uh, established importers for many years. And now for the MAB expansion, we have uh, recommended to the that this will be implemented on a first come, first serve basis. So it will not be exclusive uh, to be controlled by the existing licensees. Now we know that last year already some pork, in, pork growers have already imported. And now uh, if other pork groups want to import them, they can come in under the first come, first serve basis. Uh, the, my third point will be that uh, there is a way to do uh, transparent and safe importation uh, of meat because as Secretary, Secretary Dar has said, the smuggling occurs outside of the legal importation system. Smuggling happens uh, mainly in undocumented importation. It is not the legal imports that are, that are causing the problem. Now, with regard to uh, about the uh, safe uh, and reasonable import, transparent importation, uh, many, uh, maybe, uh, maybe six, seven years ago, we already partnered with the DTI to uh, conduct invoice verification so that suspect uh, invoices that are suspicious looking in a sense as far as value is concerned can be uh, referred to the DTI and they can check uh, the value, the authenticity of this invoice. We have a standing offer to the Bureau of Customs through DTI to reestablish, to, re to set up this verification system again, but uh, we have not heard back from the Bureau of Customs. With regard to the uh, price of the, the price of the production, especially for the hogs, uh, I just checked the USDA website and uh, latest figure from January 29 is that the average price of the light pig is uh, 49 cents per pound. So that's maybe $1.10 per kilo. So this, their production cost is like 55 pesos, 60 pesos per kilo. Now that is the competition that our uh, hot uh, industry has to uh, go up against. Now, we, I agree completely with uh, what Chester has said, that there has to be a, a uh, uh, commensurate reward to their risk. So when they say they want to add 30%, 40% more, I mean, sure, that's fine. That's reasonable. My problem with that is that it is reasonable, but it is not affordable to most of the consumers, and that is the problem. So we need to find a way to uh, resolve that situation. Uh, with regard to the reduction of import duty, so now we heard that the MDM has been reduced to 5%, and now the Department of Agriculture is asking for the reduction of pork to 5% for the next year. Huh? Uh, what I would say... No, is, no, we're not asking for that. What I, what I will say is that uh, as far as MDS, MDM is concerned, uh, unless we see that there are serious attempts to establish the production of MDM, then you will have to be prepared to extend the tariff, the, the low tariff, more than for another few years. And uh, with regard to the pork production, we have... Uh, can I intercede? You said that their, uh, their, their production cost abroad is very low, so they can afford tariff and, and still be competitive here in the Philippines. Uh, why will we bring down the tariff? Kahit nalagyan sila ng tariff, competitive pa rin sila. Kasi sabi mo sa akin, 70 plus, di ba? Oh. Kahit lagyan ng tariff, competitive pa rin dito sa Pilipinas. Why will we bring down the tariff? Parang uh, pinukpuk mo na yung local producer, sinaksak mo pa. <laughs> eh, ang mura pala sa kanila, hindi eh, lagyan natin ng tariff para pagdating dito, mura pa rin, pero competitive sila, di ba? Oh. As, I, as I said, uh, I, I gave an indication of the production price for the, the, the price of the pound. Kasi yan din ang nakita ko sa study na nabasa ko eh, 70 plus eh. Oh, kahit daw mag-tariff, eh, 102. 
Tapos may transport, hindi ko lang ma-understand kung magkano yung transportation cost and all that. Pero competitive pa rin sila kasi mas mababa pa rin yun sa ating lokal, di ba? So, why will we bring down the tariff? Eh, competitive naman sila kahit na may tariff sila sa lokal. Oo. Well, I said that is the price of the live hog, but when they cut up into parts... And then yeah, they... yeah. So, please give me your study so I can study it. Kasi yun ang nakita kong study. Sabi ni Senator Aimee, para daw... Sabi ng industry, mali daw yun. Uh, uh, under declaration daw yon and so forth pero yun din ang sinasabi niya eh, na amount eh yun ang nakita ko doon sa study eh. so we don't have to bring down the tariff because they're still competitive even with tariff so kasi kung 72 ka kahit ka may tariff parang 100 to nga after the tariff and then may transportation cost din naman Ano, eh di ganun pa rin, makakalabang ka pa rin, di ba? Mas mura pa rin eh. Oo. Kaya nga, we have to help the local para maabot din nila yung competitiveness na yun, di ba? Okay. So maybe, uh, Mr. Chan, you can give me your uh, your position paper. Kasi we, uh, I think uh, we have to go... Uh, I just want to collect your position papers. Uh, I'll give it to the senator so we can study all the position papers and then we can call another hearing, di ba? Para maka, ano tayo, na, what should be the short term and the long term solution to this problem? Siyempre short term, eh, kailangan gumawa ng policy para bumabang ang presyo. Pero I think it's this is artificial kasi tinitingnan ko noong December, November, di naman ganito, but biglang nagkaganito. <laughs> eh, ano nangyari? Di ba? Maybe, Secretary Dar, you should look at that. Kasi tinitingnan ko yung November, December, hindi naman grabe. Ngayon lang January ko grabe. Eh, hindi naman pwedeng yung cost of production biglang nag-increase ng January, di ba? Oh, there's something wrong. And then, uh, baka uh, artificial to, di ba? And then we make policies that will solve artificial problem. Eh di kung may gumawa nito, eh di tuwan-tuwa sa atin kasi nagtagumpay sila, di ba? So, Madam Chair. Yes, yes. Chair. Just, just very quickly, ma'am. Yes, yes, Senator Kiko. Yes, before, before very quickly lang ma'am kasi nabanggit kanina yung usapin na nung uh, mataas na presyo ng fertilizers. So meron tayong communication pinabot sa atin. We will forward it to Secretary uh, Dar so that he can answer it uh, in writing and then uh, explain the next hearing, ma'am. Okay, you know, sige. Uh, just, just for the so we will give the letter to Secretary Dar and he will answer. Maybe he can answer it in writing also, so we yes, will be furnished a copy. Yes, yes sir. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Thank you. Maraming uh, salamat. Uh, Congressman Briones. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, nandiyan pa po naman si Mr. Cham. Uh, sinabi niya yung production cost. Pwede po ba pakisabi niya kung magkano yung uh, ini-import nilang karne sa iba't ibang bansa sa kasalukuyan? Kasi yung po 76, hindi po tayo naniniwala doon eh. Uh, pwede po pakisabi, Mr. Cham, kung ano po yung presyo ngayon ng ini-import nating karne? Uh, can you answer that, Mr. Cham? Mr. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, uh, Pinaka-latest po, ano, itong mga, mga, mga deal, ano, mga consumate, latest for a carcass okay ang ang presyo ko pong nasabi kanina po ay the price of a live hog sa USA now mm -hmm. i'm talking about uh, carcasses from uh, Europe now so okay they have different production costs and of course they have different values of uh, no no of, the, of their parts so the price of a carcass today cut six way kumbaga isang baboy na na wala ng ulo tanggal ulo na biniyak, naging dalawang parte, dalawang uh, side, at each side, ginawang tatlong piraso, isang, uh, isang uh, shoulder part, isang middle, at isang leg. Ang presyo niyan is about mga $2.60 to $2.80 today. Oh, yun po ang presyo. $3, $1.50. $2.00, $2.6, $2.8, but it's in that area po today. So, malinaw, malinaw na yung nadi-declare uh, last year ay napakababa. Yung sabi ko, mukhang may undervaluation, uh, Madam Chair. 
Pangalawa, Madam Chair, yung pong price ceiling mukhang na-implement, uh, meron ng order, eh ako po yung nangangamba na napakalaki na idudulot po niyang problema. Pagkat yung pong galing ng Visayas Mindanao, hindi na po makakarating ng... Uh, 310, hindi ba kaya ng 310 nakalagay doon 180 sa kanila? Hindi po, kasi pagdating po dito sa Manila niya, 250 na, pagkain niyo pong kinatay, sabi tulo, 310, 320 na po ang puhunan. So pag sa retailer, supposed to be, uh, yun pong pwede, baka po yung 330, 360. At wala pong consultation yan, ma'am. Malinaw na siya ay naglagay ng presyo, yung nirecommendo niya kay Presidente, nang walang consultation po sa amin, yun po nakakalungkot. Lahat po ng kanyang solusyon para dito sa ating problema ay parusa po sa amin. Yung pong price freeze, yung pong zero tariff, yung pong pag-aalis na pagdodoble ng MAB, ay nakakalungkot po. Parusa po ang kanyang uh, sinasabi. Uh, at marami na po, lalo at titigil. At pag yan pong ASF, ma'am, ay hindi na pigil. Yung sinasabi kong 10,000 per head na dapat bayaran, hindi po mapipigil yan. Mag Mauubusan po ng baboy ang Visayas at Mindanao. Sigurado po, mas magiging malaki ang problema natin by next year. Ito taong ito hanggang next year, uh, Madam Chair. So, uh, can you please document what you're saying so we can give a copy to Secretary Dar and we will get a copy and we'll read all of them and then we'll call another hearing kasi uh, para makita ni Secretary Dar para siya ay makapag-prepare sa another hearing kung ano ang mga compromise na kailangan natin gawin para masolve natin yung ating short-term and long-term problem. Kasi ang long-term is the fate of the pork industry and short-term is yung ating, ano, yung ating high prices, di ba? At saka yung mga policies na ginagawa ngayon. So, uh, yun lang po. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, bali, si Rosendo ito, no? Uh, kung pwede lang, ano, yung price support, Uh, na 30 pesos na sinasabi natin yung transpo ma-implement na kasi kung na-implement yung pressure rito sa Metro Manila natatakot ako walang darating na uh, baboy rito sa Manila pero nangako si Secretary Dar Secretary Dar nasan si Secretary Dar na wala na Secretary Dar di ba nangako ka na with that price magbibigay ka ng subsidy sa transport di ba Be because that would be the solution. Na uh, yung Visayas Mindanao bigyan natin ng subsidy sa transport, di ba? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, sige. Ma yung lang ang compromise natin in the meantime, yung Visayas Mindanao bigyan na lang ng transportation subsidy. Kahit na mababa yung ano kasi nilabas na yon, magbigay kayo ng transportation subsidy para ma-soften yung Visayas Mindanao. Okay. Last point din sa bayanihan to, may uh, ano la ako. Kasi, ah. kasi yung... Magre-report sila to, doon. Kasi yung nireport nila, very, ano tawag doon, hindi hindi detalyado. Tapos 25% lang ang na-implement nila. Tapos wala tayong makitang ano doon para sa ASF at saka sa livestock industry. So magbibigay daw sila ng bagong report and then we'll do it in another hearing. Okay. Yeah. Kung pwede lang cash yung ibigay na sa farmers doon sa fertilizer. Kasi nag-deed ulit ng December, overpriced ulit ng 100 pesos. Uh, uh -huh. Yung region 3. Uh -huh. uh, Pangako sa amin ni Secretary Dar. Mulat na lang, ano, tapos i-forward natin kay Secretary Dar para next time may answer siya. Di ba? Yes. Uh, uh, nyo na lang. Yes? Just, just uh, to add, doon sa nasabi po ninyong uh, magbibigay ng bagong report ang uh, DA, Uh -huh. Ari rin ipaliwanag yung gaps uh, at ano ang recommended solution sila bakit uh, mabagal yung release at uh, 25% pa lang. We need, we need... Kaya nga, we have to hear it again with their new report kasi yung old report hindi maganda, 25%. Eh yes. baka naman may bago silang report plus sinabi, explain nila yung kanilang program kasi wala akong nakitang program that will solve the problem of ASF at saka yung repopulation, at saka yung maraming wala eh. At siguro ma'am, recommendation paano mapapabilis dahil uh, yes, yes. hindi po yung 25%. Yeah, sige. Salamat. Secretary Dar, I, I hope you can make a new report on uh, uh, the, uh, what you call this, Bayanihan 2 to recover act, di ba? Uh, kasi masyadong hindi... 
maganda report yung baya yung ni report niyo sa amin na binasa namin eh ha okay so with that uh, thank you for coming ma'am more ma'am more yes 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 ma'am kanina na bang yes just one more na banggit ni secretary dar na yun nga nakakakita sila ng profiteering at in the next hearing we would like to know uh, what cases uh, should be filed and with whom and to whom so that uh, talagang ipakita natin na uh, ginagamit natin we're yung... serious about Uh, yes. Yes. fighting this profiteering. Okay. Yes, kasi parang tingin ko, Secretary Darm, there's something wrong kasi nag-spike lang January. Eh. What made na nag-spike ng January? Eh, December, dapat nauna na nung December kasi malaki ang demand nung December. Tapos nung November, wala naman. Diba? Hanggang hanggang 1 million ang pwedeng i-fine ng DA sa mga profiteering. Kaya... Uh, nandiyan sa batas po yan, eh, gusto natin makita yung aksyon na merong minuguntahan, no? pinapaliwanag, nagpapaliwanag, pinapaliwanag. Yung mga nabanggit po kaninang nagpo-profiteering. Uh, uh, Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, yes. Madam Chair? Yes. Last na lang ako connected din sa bayan yan, narinig sa huba ng DBM yung buong pondo for DA? Uh, Secretary Dar, narinig, narinig na ba yung bu buong bayanihan? For you, you find from DBM you, in 24B. The last, the last release was done on the. Uh, yung MR po yung last release early this na second week of January. Ah, uh, uh, magkano magkano ni release last release magkano yon? Five billion po. So na release na ang 19 before that. Uh, in staggered uh, schedule. Yes, uh, yes. So maybe you can report now better kasi do sa iyong ano, 25% eh. Baka it will be better. Okay. okay. So we will wait for the report. Ninth, ano okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay, so thank you for coming and uh, please submit all your position paper, your report, and then we'll schedule another hearing to analyze yung inyong mga position paper and the new reports of Secretary Dar. Thank you very much and good afternoon. Okay. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair.